Miss Hope Radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network. I need your help to get to the year 1985. You're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening, Fade to Black, Bespoke Radio for the Masses. Ah, yeah, man, how you doing? Today's Wednesday, Wednesday, November 2nd, 2022. Let's do this, man. <laughs> I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer, and Unex Networks. Grace Hobbs. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? All right, tonight, an amazing show last night, Roy Thinnis. Following up with that, tonight, Elizabeth Hoekstra joins us. Tonight, we're going to be talking about grounding, and she's got a new book out. It, uh, and we'll talk about that tonight. It releases this uh, Friday. I think pre-order is, is Friday. We'll be talking about all of that. The book is called The Mother Earth Effect. All right. Now, I have been grounding. I've been talking a lot about it. It has, it's, it's, it's changed me. And we're going to be talking, what is grounding? You know, and I remember uh, uh, a year ago, Elizabeth and I uh, talking about this. And, and, and <laughs> we'll talk about We'll talk about that tonight because um, I remember, I didn't know, right? I know what grounding is, right? In that, in a studio like this, I remember uh, putting together uh, uh, my first major, like big recording studio, uh, 24 track and stuff like that. And the owner of the studio goes, okay, man, um, we're going to run a grounding rod outside um, I, I've got it. So I need you to go ahead and get that going. I go, okay, cool, cool. What is a grounding rod? I don't know. All right. So I, I had to do a little research, a grounding rod. Okay. So, you know, when you have a three prong plug, right? So you've got your electricity here, right? And then you have a, that third plug, that's the ground and the ground technically supposed to go to earth, the ground, the earth that you walk on. And that grounds your electricity, right? Okay. And then, so in a recording studio, it's very important that you have ground lifts and you have these great plugs and the, you're grounding the equipment and you're running grounding wires and then everything goes and one, you know, goes out to the grounding rod that's, you know, four or five, six feet long that's pounded into the ground and you hook everything up to that. You ground it. It's for silence, right? So that's, that's grounding in the electric world. It's the same process for your body. All right. Now I understand. I've got all the gear. Tonight we're going to be talking about what grounding is. And I'm going to tell I'm going to share some stories. Grounding, grounding is amazing. So I'm so excited about this show tonight. Plus, Elizabeth and I uh, just spent uh, 10 days in Egypt together. Um uh, Elizabeth and I will laugh about this tonight. 
Elizabeth and I, we were probably together uh, more than um, anybody else in that we, we, we were paired up and, and we took more selfies, right? We just, okay. Selfie time. And, uh, and we've got a lot of shared experiences because the two of us were off doing our own thing uh, together all over Egypt. And not that we're going to spend a whole lot of time talking about Egypt tonight, but we did just get back and uh, there you go. And uh, I'll surprise you with a, a couple of things tonight uh, with Elizabeth. Okay. And then tomorrow night is another fader night with open lines all night long. All right. Fader night tomorrow night. Coming up, I will be hosting. Tickets went on sale yesterday. Today is the second. Tickets went on sale yesterday, the first, for the Conscious Life Expo. Um, I'm hosting, I am emceeing, I'm hosting, uh, a bunch of, uh, exclusive events that are going to be going on there and, uh, a lunch in there's only 50 seats available. If you're a fade or not, and you want to go, there's only 50 seats, get over to consciouslifeexpo.com and get your seat for that lunch. in. it's going to be amazing. I've got some special guests and, and things. So you don't want to miss that. I will also be hosting the Expo's Got Talent talent show. And I think this is the fourth year uh, uh, of not only the talent show, but for me hosting it. It's just incredible. And so you can get tickets for that too as well. Everything is at ConsciousLifeExpo.com. 200 vendors, over 200 speakers. It's the biggest event of the year at uh, uh, just, in, you know, in the world. And it's at LAX at the LAX Hilton, ConsciousLifeExpo.com. The links are below. And then two weeks after that, Saturday, April 1st, I will be hosting the Parapod Festival right here in Los Angeles at the Hyatt Regency in Valencia, California. This is a one-day live event. This is an awards ceremony, a media event podcast awards it's a film festival you can submit your podcast your media your tv series your documentary your film whatever you've got or it that deals with the paranormal right now submit submit your stuff at podpass uh, pod, parapodfilmfest.com the links are below and a week after that april 7th through the 14th i will be also hosting and presenting on the Hidden Secrets Seminar at Sea Cruise. And the links for that are also below. All right? All right. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Yeah. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. Oh, man. You know, um, I, I, I don't. I, I, you know, I, I, I use Twitter for my own thing. I, I don't really get involved. I don't go out there and I don't comment and, 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 you know, join in on the fracas that is Twitter. But I did notice, uh, over the last week since Elon stepped in my, 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 the home page, my home page, it's all politics. It was never like that before. <laughs> It was all UFOs. Oh, man. I cannot believe uh, what I'm saying. I just block, 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 block. Do not want to see this block. Do not want to see this. Trying to clean it up, and it's relentless. Also, in, in my feet, just like weird <clears throat> fight, vid, people fighting, like a random cam, street cam, weirdness, man. Weirdness. I remember um, uh, when Facebook first started. So this would have been around 2008, 2009. I'm on Facebook. And Facebook got hacked. And if you were on Facebook back then, maybe you'll remember this. But it, it lasted for an evening. Uh, many, many, many hours. The most disturbing photographs. I, I mean, and I've never seen anything like that. And it was just all over. And and Facebook got hacked. And and I was scrolling through I'm like, people, who who's taking these pictures? What is this? Just 
it was just weirdly disturbing, like a bad movie, uh, a frightening. It was crazy. And uh, Facebook got it fixed. Well, that's 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 my Twitter feed now my the, the home page on twitter it's like what happened it's crazy it's crazy i just that's it that's it i very rarely click on it and i just kind of tested it this week and man anyway block block not interested block all sorts of blocks too just crazy i just don't want that stuff in my feed let's get to the breaking news North Korea fired at least three ballistic missiles today, according to the South Korean military, just one day after Kim Jong Fatty Fat Un ramped up tensions on the peninsula with a barrage of weapons tests. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said today it detected one presumed long range missile fired from North Korea's capital, Pyongyang followed by two presumed short-range ballistic missiles fired from an area south of the South Pyongan province. In Japan, the first missile launch triggered evacuation warnings in the northern Miyagi, Yamagata, and Niigata prefectures, where the Japanese prime minister's office initially, all this going down on Twitter, by the way, said it was expected to fly over Japan, and it did. It flew over Japan. Japan's defense ministry later evaluated that the missile just landed in the Pacific Ocean. Absolutely crazy. Now, other crazy news today. Bigfoot may have been spotted by an Eagle Nest observation camera. I've seen the video. And it's pretty cool considering the camera is pointed at the nest. This Eagle Nest camera was intended to view baby eagle hatchlings, but caught something resembling Bigfoot, right? Just off in, 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 in one corner. The video edit zooms in on the mysterious human-shaped dark figure for easier viewing, but you can also see the original footage of it in the corner. It's incredible. You need to check that out. I'll get a link up uh, for everybody in social media so you can uh, check out the footage yourself, but it is absolutely insane. All right. Now, for the third time, in the past two years, China's space program has sent a large module into orbit to expand its Tiangong space station using a Long March 5B rocket, which appears to lack the hardware to make a controlled reentry and steer itself towards, you know, a safe splashdown, you know, somewhere in the middle of the ocean somewhere. No, instead... The spent rocket booster weighing over 20 metric tons is expected to largely burn up as it sizzles through the atmosphere, but it's likely some of the larger components and other debris will survive all the way back to Earth. Currently, this atmospheric reentry is expected to happen somewhere during a 28-hour window that begins this Friday evening. Incredible. Now, um, also, I went and looked at the video. Um, I posted this last night in Twitter, uh, the still shot. And uh, it was posted from, oh, congratulations to Ken Priest, by the way. Ken, if you're listening, dude, that was a great press release today. And and your quote in the press release. But anyway, it uh, was incredible. I know that guy. Congratulations, Ken, Ken Priest. Um, Mike Layton, uh, last night, uh, a couple hours into the show, posted a screenshot from the video that I made in Luxor. And I went out into the square in Luxor, and I and I did a pan of uh, the pillars and the crowd. And, and, and at the end of the video, and I wanted to catch the moon, and at the end of the video, there is an object over my shoulder, and it's got four lights on it. And uh, and I thought to myself, now I remember 
looking at the moon and there was a star uh, above uh, like Venus or something or Jupiter. And it looked really cool. So I wanted to make sure that I got the moon in this shot. It just looked incredible. It was, you know, this incredibly clear, warm night. And it was, it was just amazing. So I wanted to catch it. So as I panned around and I'm closing out the video, below the moon and above my shoulder, right above the pillow, is an object. And it appears to have four lights. And it's in a semi... I posted it uh, last night when uh, uh, Don Schmidt was on the show. So uh, it was a great catch. I didn't see it. Um, so I went back and I watched the video today, and there it is. <clears throat> so what I was thinking, and I almost posted this last night, that it must be this one of the stars that I saw up there, and it was just like a multiple exposure. That's what I thought. All right, it, it looks cool in the shot, but Don pointed out last night. He said, "Hey, man, the moon is 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 in one spot." You know those four, and so I went back and I watched it, and it's there. Now I'm not saying it's a UFO. Um, I don't know what it is, but there is an object in this video. So um, I had a busy day today. I didn't get a chance to go back. I'm going to. Uh, do an edit. I'll show the whole video. I'm going to get it posted up on YouTube. I'm going to do some screen grabs. I'm going to do some slow motion shots. I have the high res video. Um, I I freeze framed it today, uh, multiple frames, and it's there. Yeah, I don't know what it is. <clears throat> I really don't. I don't. I, I I don't. I'll just post it and let everybody make their comments. And and uh, it's definitely an object. And these four lights are connected to it. It's, yeah. it's pretty cool, though. And uh, and I didn't see it. I, I looked at the moon. I'm going to stay on this for a second. I was standing on top of a pillar that was cut off, and it was like six feet high. And I got boosted up uh, to climb up there. And so... Uh, and I wanted to, you know, to get this really cool shot of every. You can see in the video that everybody is below me. It's because I'm standing up, probably six feet in the air. And I looked around, and I took a solid look at the moon, and because it just looked amazing. And I went, oh, man, look at that! And I didn't see anything. I didn't. I did not. And so I turn around and I and I panned and I I took this this video. And there you go. But I'm telling you right now, I looked in that direction to make sure that I could catch the moon and Venus or Jupiter because it looked so cool the way it was lighting up over the pillars. Um, I did not see anything there. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. All right. Let's get the show cracking on this day in history. 1947. Everything happened in 1947. The Hughes Flying Boat, also known as the Spruce Goose. At one time, the largest aircraft ever built is piloted by designer Howard Hughes on its first and only flight in Long Beach Harbor, right here in Southern California. If you can call it a flight, it flew about that high, <laughs> like 100 yards. He got it off the ground, though, or off the water, I should say. Here's your fader fact. I tried this today. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go to the comments. I want to see what everybody's going to say. Multiple reflections. No, 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 no. You watch the video. There's something in the sky. It's not, it's not reflections, my brother. I don't know what it would be reflecting off of. It's up in the sky. Wait till you see the video. It's cool. All right. Oh, uh, fader fact. All right, here we go. It is impossible to lick your elbow. And that is your fader fact. So now, everybody watching this show right now, everybody listening is trying to lick their elbow. You can't do it. 
I didn't know. I tried. I was six inches short. I didn't even, I didn't even, I can't look my elbow. <laughs> uh, everybody's trying. I know, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing right now. Can't do it. You can dislocate it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Uh, Adam Bicycle. You just said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where did that go? Where'd that go? Uh, I, I, I may, oh yeah, here it is. Here it is. Man, it, it's going too fast. There it is. I'm sure it tastes horrible though. <laughs> Gene Simmons can. Maybe. I'm I saying maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. There's Ken Priest. Congratulations, Ken. Uh, that's absolutely uh, tremendous. Uh, Palmdale's next. All right. All right. Uh, where am I at? Oh, yeah. Licking your elbow. Uh, I did know one kid that could do it. No, no, no. You just stop with that. <laughs> Oh man. All right. Uh wh- where I'm at. All right. So tonight, very special guest, Elizabeth Hoekstra is with us. I'm so excited. And uh she had an amazing day today. And so did I, actually, but nothing compared to hers. I'm gonna be talking about what went down today in her world uh at the start of the show. So that's I I I'm still I'm still blown away. And so anyway, Elizabeth will be with us at the bottom of the hour. We're going to be talking about grounding and her new book, which is called The Mother Earth Effect. Presale goes down on Friday. Tomorrow is another fader night with open lines all night long. All right. All right. Um, River Moon Coffee, rivermoonwellness.com, fade to black blend. Best coffee in the world. Visit the Amazon store. It's simple. Fade to black blend. Right? River Moon. It'll it'll pop up right there. And uh, promo code F2B blend if you go to the website. 15% off of your entire order today. Um, Grounding. We're going to be talking about grounding tonight. And... uh, This is the deal. This is the deal. We were, this is how recent this was for me. Um, We were in the Bahamas and Elizabeth gifted me a, a, a grounding kit. And so she hooks me up and I was like, okay, all right. And, and Billy looked straight at me and he goes, dude, I, I, I do not. I do not sleep without it. All right. Now I take Billy at as well, Elizabeth too, but but Billy, when he gives you that look, right? That straight face, you know, it, it's it's serious. So I, I get back to LA and uh that night, uh, uh let me I gotta think about this. I think it was like a Sunday night. And uh I called Elizabeth. I said, So how do I do this? What do I do? And she tells me. And I get everything hooked up. The next day, I I woke up. I went, that was, that was an incredible night. And I called up Elizabeth. She's still in the Bahamas. And I said, this is insane. She goes, I told you. I said, but, but, but Jimmy, (laughs) it was like Elizabeth. People got to know about this. And and every night since then, um, and I've talked to Billy about this and Elizabeth, and, and uh, the world needs to know what grounding is. Now, what am I talking about? How can it be? It, 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 it's, it's just tonight Elizabeth Hoekstra is here, and I'm going to share some stories. I want to hear from her, too, as well how she incorporates it into her life. I know what I am using it for now. Um, I've got the books and I've got the this and that, but I'm, I'm on my own little journey with this. You need to find out. And, and I hope that uh, you listen 
uh, to everything tonight and, and you go and you check this out for yourself because it is absolutely incredible. Um, the other night I texted Billy, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll save this for later, uh, with Elizabeth, but I texted Billy and I said, I found the secret, man. I found the secret with grounding. And then I hit him with it. And, uh, his comment was uh, pretty funny, but man, 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 this is a game changer. So tonight it's grounding with Elizabeth Hoekstra. Her new, her new book is called The Mother Earth Effect. We're going to cover all of that tonight. We've got the links below and throughout social media on where you can go for the book. And of course, Elizabeth's website and a grounding website, and you can go and, and research and, and get, get your stuff done. Tomorrow night is another fader night with open lines all night long. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer and UnX Networks Race Hobbs. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'll be right back after this short break with our guest, Elizabeth Hoekstra. Stay with me. This is Nicole Church, daughter of you know who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2B Blend for 15% off of your order today. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at jimmychurchradio.com. I'll be the host and MC once again this year for the 2023 Conscious Life Expo, February 10th through the 13th at the LAX Hilton in Los Angeles, California. This is a four-day live event featuring hundreds of speakers, exhibitors, and not-to-miss special events. Check this out. Linda Moulton Howe, Bashar, Deborah King, Daniel Sheehan, George Norrie, David Wolf, Sean Stone, Danny Brinkley, Susan Slaughter, the Leo King, David Palmer, Scott Walter, and another 200 inspirational speakers. Special events include a disclosure lunch with me, Expo's Got Talent, hosted by me, a seance with Susan Slaughter, the George Nori Forum, and the Leo King is going to DJ at a dance party. Over 200 exhibitors, over 200 speakers. It's the biggest event of the year. Tickets are on sale now at ConsciousLifeExpo.com. For everything you need, info, tickets, schedule, and speakers, please visit ConsciousLifeExpo.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. 
Do you have an interest in the paranormal? Then you'll love the UnXNetwork.com. The X is your streaming audio and video for everything supernatural, strange, and mysterious, like UFOs, Bigfoot, ghosts, and so much more. From hosts like Jimmy Church, Whitley Strieber, Micah Hanks, and Christina Gomez, visit the UnXNetwork.com show page for a complete list of all the paranormal programs you'll find on the X. Be sure to follow us on Twitter for updates at KUNXDB. Follow our Facebook group, UnX Network. Find the podcast on Spotify, iHeart, Audible, and Apple Podcast. It's time. It's new. It's the X. 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 Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Massey, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'm the Game Changer and UnX Networks. Tonight, Elizabeth Hoekstra is here. We're going to be talking about grounding tonight and a bunch of other stuff, too, as well. But the release of her new book, The Mother Earth Effect. Her career was started out in the entertainment industry as a young model and actress on syndicated television programs, movies, music videos, and magazines which continued to expand while she attended Davenport College for Business Management and Marketing Administration. She received her real estate license in 2017 and has also contributed significantly to several charities, focusing her efforts on children's health and education through hosting fundraisers. Throughout her various careers, she has seen how stress can take its toll on people's physical well-being, leading to her most recent professional engagement. Elizabeth is uh, the founder of Biohack Your Best Life and the director of operations for Forbidden Knowledge and ForbiddenKnowledge.tv and all that stuff. And I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black, my good friend, the one and only Elizabeth Hoekster. Elizabeth! Hey, Jimmy, what's good? What's good? So good to see you. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I'm not doing as good as you. I'm not doing it. You know, I, I had a great day. You know, yeah, and, yeah you did. So, <laughs> and, and, you know, so I'm, I wanted to tell Elizabeth about my great day. She goes, well, you know, I had a pretty amazing day, too. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to, you know what? I just, can, can, I, can I tell everybody? Or do you? Do you <laughs> Can, can can I do it? I, yeah, yeah. I guess I guess you can. <laughs> yes, you can. Okay, I'm gonna say this. Uh, everybody can figure it out for themselves. I'm gonna say, congratulations. Thank you so much. It means a lot. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and show that hand to the camera. Go ahead. Go ahead. There it is. Congratulations. <laughs> And um, I, I didn't know it was coming, and uh, well, obviously you didn't either. But uh, that is absolutely uh, amazing, and you know, and look, I, I, I thought that Billy and I were pretty tight. <laughs> you guys are, <laughs> yeah, right? Keep a secret. He didn't. I didn't know. I. 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 I, I wow. Yeah. And, um, I, I've just been smiling uh, since since I got the news. Congratulations, you two, and you. <laughs> that is just absolutely amazing. How do you feel? You happy? Yeah, yeah, I feel amazing. I'm on like cloud nine. I'm trying to focus. I was trying to ground myself before I got on here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, see now <laughs> with with that on your hand. You know, this is what you do. You just go up to everybody and go, hey, do you know what time it is? Oh, hey. Can yeah, I yeah. Do, you know like, do you know the directions? Like, what? <laughs> right. I get to the bus stop over here. Do I go that way? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. That's absolutely amazing. And uh, 
Wow. Wow. I'm, I'm just blown away. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for uh, the both of you. Uh, the both of you. It's just uh, incredible. Okay. And, you know, our friendship is very special uh, to me. And uh, this is a family thing. And, and I'm just, I'm on, I'm on cloud nine uh, right there with you. It's just amazing. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Appreciate uh, it. <laughs> now, um, we've got a lot to talk about tonight. And before we get to grounding, um, there's a couple of things I want to get out of the way. Yes. Number one, you don't, I didn't know about this until last night, but um, uh, in Egypt, I, I didn't know about this until last night. Uh, we went to Luxor. And you and I uh, walked around Luxor together. And at the end of the night, uh, you and I were in the big square together. Mm -hmm. Billy was off doing his thing. And um, I shot a, a panoramic video. You watched me do it. I was standing up on that thing and, and I shot. So check this out. You were there. Yeah, but yeah, I, I so we were talking about the moon. You remember the moon that night? Yeah, and that was beautiful. And, I think it was a full moon too. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a full moon. Yeah. So I shot this panoramic video, and uh, and you were standing below me. And then after we shot the video, you and I went over and we sat on 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 the bench, uh, the, the the rocks, and we were just looking at the thing. But check this: you're not going to believe what I filmed. What at the end of the video? Check this out. This was posted, I didn't see it, it was posted on Twitter last night uh, from Mike Layton. He did a screen grab. Check mm -hmm. this out. Right there, a UFO. Right there oh, in the back. Man. Yeah, and and here's the thing, see? Elizabeth, and, and you and I were standing right there and didn't see it. So there it is, and now I went back and I watched the video uh, today, and I was yeah. thinking, it was the star because you remember we were talking about the moon star, and the star. Yeah. right? Right. That's not it. The star is above it, and in the video, that right there is in the video, in oh, the back. Wow. Yeah, is that crazy? crazy. Talk? And, and here's the thing: um, I need to stress this with everybody. Elizabeth and I were standing there for a good 15, 20 minutes, looking at the sky, looking around, yeah. taking selfies. Yeah. Right? We took. I, I'm going to go back and look at the selfies that you and I took underneath the moon. Mm -hmm. Right? And see if that that is there. Is that crazy? Wow! I was staring right up at in that direction because I was trying to get a picture of the moon with my my phone. Right. I didn't see that at all. And right. I was staring up in that vicinity for, it was a while. <laughs> yeah, 15 minutes. I, I, I'm going to say 15, 20 minutes uh, we yeah. were there. Um, I, and and looking at the moon, looking in that direction. But in the yeah. video, it's right there, man. It's crazy. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Egypt... Um, uh, so many people had asked me, did you see any UFOs? Did you, and I said, no, nah, man, I was looking at, I was looking at temples. I, I, I never really looked up at the sky. I was so focused on, on what was around us. And then boom, I shoot this video with this object in the sky. Crazy. Oh, <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah. the energy there is crazy though. You know, now, I mean, it's, it's wild, life-changing experiences, life-changing energy. And then that thing happened to me. Remember I was tripping yeah. and so were you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah. Let's, 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 I want you to share. I didn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned, oh, okay. So this is what happened. Um, I come out uh, uh, from underground, uh, the Pharaonic Lake and I go down and, and I do my thing and I, you know, splash the water and, 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 and as I come out, uh, you know, from underground, it's deep underground. As I come up the stairs and people are asking me, so Jimmy, what's it like? I'm like, I'm waving everybody off and yeah. I'm going through this thing. And I didn't want, I didn't want it to go away. Right. Yeah. I wanted to I wanted it to stay with me. So I'm waving people off and I and I turn to my left and there's this big yeah. stretch of sand and desert. Mm -hmm. And and then I see off in the distance little Elizabeth, right? Mm -hmm. She's about to, she's well, Jimmy, right? I'm like, Man, <laughs> I don't want to talk to anybody right now. And she so but she yeah. waves so I we join up. Yeah. And you then, and I, you know what? I was, I didn't want to be rude to you. <laughs> yeah. but I, was, 
I was, I was tripping out, right? Yeah, you were in your own thing. <laughs> And so were you. Yeah. And he went, Jimmy, 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 I, I, I got to. I, 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 I. So I didn't, I haven't told anybody. Uh, what happened? What happened to you? Man, wow. Okay. So we were at Dendera, and that energy there is so strong. You can feel it almost upon walking, almost upon the, the bus pulling up to the Dendera. It's just the, the energy is so magnificent. It wasn't anything negative. I felt a little bit iffy at some of the places that we went, but Dendera was completely different. So right. I really just wanted to experience Dendera alone away from the group, just so I could really process things. I went there last year and I, I saw a lot of it already. So I really wanted to just take it all in, in a meditative way with my headphones on away from people so I could really be in my own energy. So I was wandering off, you know, by myself and everybody was down, I think in that the, uh, the down by where you were when you had your experience, everyone was over there. And so I was wandering by myself. I went into this vacant temple and nobody was there. There was zero sunlight in this temple. You could see the sun enough for the wall to just barely show the hieroglyphs on the wall. I mean, I could see it wasn't completely black, but I could, you know, it was very dark. So I'm in this temple and I close my eyes. I take a deep breath. I'm trying to feel the energy of the temple. And I, I sound slowly and I'm just in this zone. I can feel everything. I'm just in this meditative state and I'm staring in, in front of me. I'm standing in the center of this temple, staring in front of me at the wall on the hieroglyphs at the hieroglyphs. And all of a sudden I get this weird rush of energy and I see a, a red light it was almost like a light like smoke almost it was it was red and then it formed into orange and yellow and white and it went up the wall psh, like that now this is wild for me because i'm not a seer okay <laughs> i don't see things i always wanted to see things but i'm not a seer i i don't hear things i don't see things i feel things deeply that's my gift i can feel things but as far as seeing things i don't do that so when i saw that i was like I was like, oh my, God. <laughs> oh my God. And I walked out of the temple. I'm tripping. I'm tri I'm like, what did I just experience? I, I was freaked out, scared. I'm like, I, I don't know if I'm, am I going crazy? Did I, did I, did anyone else see what just happened? Because it was a light, it flooded. I, I'm talking, it was dark in there. And then it wasn't. So I was like, Jimmy, you're the first person I saw. <laughs> so thank you for you know, of, of all the people, of all the people that you have to wave down, yeah. <laughs> I'm going through my own thing at that moment. Yeah. And and I just did I didn't want to hear from you. I know. <laughs> I was like, what you gonna hear? You're like, dude, dude. So now um I want to explain to everybody Dendera is ginormous. Okay. Mm -hmm. So imagine uh you know a plot of land and then the Dendera temple uh in front, which is huge, right? This we're talking about you know, five, six stories tall. I don't know how many, a hundred yards wide, this huge stone, beautiful mm -hmm. temple. But on the uh, the temple complex itself, mm -hmm. there are uh, two other equally, almost as big, separate temples that are separate from the Dendera main temple. Mm -hmm. and so back in the corner, I was in the middle in the Pharaonic Lake. Yeah. Back in the corner over here is this temple that Elizabeth went into by herself. She wandered off. Mm -hmm. and I came out of uh, the underground lake. Yeah. She's coming out of the temple. And there's <laughs> a distance between the two of us. This is not a small, this is not a backyard. Right? This is a, a big place. Mm -hmm. So it took a few minutes or, you know, a minute for me to, uh, to get up to Elizabeth and, and the same thing for her. And she is, um, how do I say you are so collected, you're uh -huh. so level headed. I've never seen you like, I don't want to use a bad word, but lose your stuff. Uh -huh. and, and, and that's where you were. And but here's, this is what I want to point out to everybody. When Elizabeth starts to tell me this, she points at the temple. She goes, I was in there. So I look over and it's a big temple, you know, pillars. And there was like a two-story doorway. Mm -hmm. um, 
but inside of it was black. Yeah. There were no lights in there. There was nothing in there. And you said I was in the middle of that and there was no light. And I'm looking in there and you wandered in there by yourself yeah. into this ginormous temple that had no lights in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was wild. I just, as something almost called me there, I think, because why would I even wander in there by myself? There's no one around me and I'm just, you know, wandering and I just, as soon as I entered it, it was almost like my mind, you know, I was med I was in a meditative state before I walked in the temple, but when I walked in the temple, it was like, boom, something got me. I was just like almost in a trance. Like, do you I, remember uh, your first words to me? Um, or, or, this is what Elizabeth said. She goes, <laughs> she goes, Jimmy, I don't see shit ever. <laughs> Say that. That's exactly. And I said, "What? What? What happened?" I, I, I'm not crazy, but I never see anything. I don't. I don't experience anything. Yeah. Okay, Elizabeth. Well, what happened? And then you told me this. But that that was the first thing. It, it was like you had never experienced anything like that before. No, I haven't. And and if I have, right, I always can back it up with science or some sort of proof of something or just you know mystical things. With with feelings, I'm a very deep feeler. I can feel people's emotions, moods, and 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 good, bad, all of that. I can feel it deeply within my body. But as far as the seeing thing, <laughs> literally just caught me off guard because I, I explain things science based. You know, I, I wasn't really, I never studied aliens. I never, you know, I wasn't this this way. I didn't really look into all of this stuff before I met Billy. I believe in it, but I just wasn't honed in on, on this certain things. I'm more of the health, wellness, spiritual, that side and aspect of things. So this caught right. me all the way off guard. And I'm just, I was, I'm still blown away because I'm still trying to process and figure it out and back it up with some sort of science, but I can't. <laughs> I remember, and I remember going, man, Elizabeth, man, I'm, I'm going through my own thing right now. And and, uh, and I tried to tell you uh, what I was, and then we went over. We sat down. You remember? We were just like, man, what is? There's like no words. No words. There's no words to describe. No words for it at all. D Dendera, um, out of uh, be, because there were so many special places that we went to, and 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 I I do want to stress with everybody that. Billy and our group, you know, they're off and the Egyptologist and the, they're, they're studying and the, and Elizabeth and I were doing our own thing. We, mm -hmm. we were just, you know, doing our, uh, our own, uh, it, it was just magical. And so for you and I to go through, I remember every morning for breakfast, you know, I, I yeah, we're sitting there, it's like, man, here we go, man. Uh, <laughs> <Go again. laughs> It was, it was just, it was just tremendous. So, yeah. um, I, 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 I'm not posting our selfies tonight, but I think I counted, uh, 50. Wow. We took 50 selfies. Yeah. Oh, and, you know, every single place. <laughs> you know, and I, <laughs> I back and I thought about it and I, you know, I'm counting them. I went, like, yeah, I guess we did. Every we, place we went. Yeah. We did it everywhere. Um, all day long, but it was, it was, it was so much fun. So, uh, but I'm not going to bore everybody with, uh, my camera roll tonight. Um, now, uh, I want to get to grounding and, and, and now here, here's, here's the, I'm, I'm go going to start here. My first night of grounding, uh, Elizabeth gifted me, uh, a kit. So, um, I come home. Uh, that was in the Bahamas. I came home that night. Uh, you guys were still in the Bahamas. I called you up and I said, okay, what do I do? And you talked me through everything. I got all hooked up. I said, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right. That was it. So yeah. that first night. So I wake up the next day and I sat up. I was first off, I was wide awake. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like, you know, you know, in that morning fog, I was like, instantly awake yeah. that was a strange thing uh -huh. um and and then i'm remembering the dreams like this colorful night mm -hmm. and i'm refreshed and i went through uh, an everyday sense by the way 
I did like 50 things. I was work. I was just like, just. Oh, wait. <laughs> and, and I went something and I called you up and I go, I dreamed like it was insane. You go, yeah, what else? I said, man, I've been this energy. Yeah, and what else? I said, this, this is incredible, Elizabeth. Um, I'm going to go to sleep tonight. I'm going to call you tomorrow. That was my first initial experience with it. When I say something like that, what what's going on that I have a clear head yeah. while sleeping, mm -hmm. tremendous, in-depth, hard sleep. Like you do not wake up. You do not. You just cruise through the night, this deep sleep. Yeah. And this, this, this energy thing, what's, what's, what's happening? <laughs> My soul lights up when I talk about this, just because I, I just know how beneficial it is for people. So basically what happened to you is in, in my personal opinion, I'm not a doctor, but I do believe and have studied this enough to know that you probably got into those beautiful, deep states of sleep for the first time in a long time, because as you should, Jimmy, you should wake up rested, ready to go, have, you know, remembering your dreams and then be on point all day long. Right. You should be like that every day. That's the way we are naturally supposed to behave as these physical beings on this beautiful planet. We just got disconnected from the earth. So it's been a long time that that we have have been away from these healing powers. So it's like people forgot that health is homeostasis all of these dis, dis ease this dis ease within our systems it's not natural our natural state is health right pure health so by grounding and having all the resources in your body that you need which grounding gives you you were able to get into these deep states of sleep there are three states of sleep light REM and deep right REM you dream so that tells me that you were able to get into a nice REM sleep and dream. And when you wake up from that, you remember when you remember your dreams, that means you got into a beautiful, long REM sleep, deep sleep. You need that as well. If you don't get these three states of sleep, light, deep REM, you're not going to feel on point the next day. You're going to feel lethargic. You'll be tired. Your brain will be foggy because if you do not get in these deep states of sleep, your brain and your body are not detoxing. When you sleep and when your body goes into REM sleep, your lymphatic system turns on, which is not your lymphatic system, but your glymphatic system, which is in your brain. This basically is the cleaner people. They walk around your brain and they, they sweep away all the toxicity that you've built up throughout the day. So a lot of people are waking up with this brain fog because they have not detoxed at night because they, they cannot get into these deep states of sleep. So long story short, you woke up with that energy, with that clarity, because you got into these deep states of sleep. For the first time in a long time. I can't wait to go to sleep now. I, I, I cannot wait to, to get hooked up. Um, mm -hmm. I've, got the, I've got the power uh, uh, bed now. And we'll go through all of that. <laughs> this thing is just. <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, but um, I, I, I look forward to it. Um, uh, up until the Bahamas, I had, uh, uh I, I'm, I just turned 59. So I, I've been doing things my own way for a very long time. And I would, uh, stay up, you know, I've been doing the show for 10 years. So after the show, and I'd watch three, four, five episodes of something I would binge, I would watch a couple of movies and, mm -hmm and force myself to get tired and clean, you know, try to clear my head of the, the show and things, uh, to fall asleep. It, it's not that kind of party now. It's not, man. I, I don't, I'm not interested in the TV. Yeah. I mean, I, I just want to get the lights out and I want to yeah. get hooked up and I want to go and have fun and enjoy this, 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 this night of grounding that yeah. I've never experienced before. It's incredible. It's Elizabeth. I can't, I, I, I don't have the right words uh, to describe what's, what's been happening.
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's deep because honestly, people go their whole lives without being connected to the earth. And, and let's just break it down for people so they have a little bit of an understanding. This isn't grounding as in um, what I was trying to do before I got on the show. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's not no, that. No, no, it's an actual physical response to what's going on. So the earth is full of these negative ions all over the surface, right? The sun radiates and it's it's radiation. Right. So they, they the sun spits out photons, negative ions. Right. And these these negative ions, there's an abundance of them over the Earth's surface. Now, back in the 1960s, 1970s, they came out with synthetic sold shoes, which disconnected people from from the Earth, basically. And since then, you've seen a rise in diabetes. You've seen a rise in autoimmune disease on the same scale as rubber sold shoes, which is mm. why. that so, makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, yes, because basically what's happening is when you're connected to the earth, your body is sucking up all of these negative ions. Every single cell, atom, everything in your body, they need electrons to function properly. So when you are not grounded to the earth, you're walking around with a positive charge. When you are grounded to the earth, your your physical body stabilizes, you become neutral. And it is impossible, I'm going to say this twice, it is impossible to be chronically inflamed when you're grounded. One more time. It is impossible to be chronically inflamed when you're grounded. What is the basis of all autoimmune disease? Inflammation. Mm -hmm. Inflammation. So what your body is doing when it's grounded is it's now having all of the resources that it needs to function properly, right? Because without it, now let's break this down even more. So your immune system, when your immune system isn't working properly or it is working properly, it, it, overdoes these things within your system. This is what autoimmune disease is, basically. It's inflammation. It's your immune system working over and working over and causing these cytokine storms all within your physical body. Mm -hmm. So your white blood cells, when you have some sort of bacteria, if something is, is wrong or a damaged cell in your body, a white blood cell, a neutrophil will come and it will encapsulate that, that, that cell that's damaged or whatever the pathogen is. And then it will release reactive oxygen species. This is good until it does it, these reactive oxygen species, they rip electrons from these different pathogens. And it, 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 it it's like a, a, a train that just keeps going and going. Now, if there isn't any pathogens for that reactive oxygen species to rip an electron from, mm -hmm. where is it going to go? It's going to go into healthy tissue. Now, this causes that, that, that train again and again, more damage, more inflammation. It's creating all of this inflammation in your system. It's a never ending process that's going on, which causes all of your body to become inflamed. And that turns into these autoimmune diseases, right? So when you're grounded, it is impossible to be chronically inflamed. So your body, it puts out the fires, all of these cytokine storms that are happening within your system. It puts those fires out. Now your physical body and your cells and everything has has what it needs to function properly. This also affects red blood cells, right? So Billy, for instance, he had very, very, very thick blood when I first met him, so much so that his circulation was, was really, really bad. He would get up every couple hours out of the bed in the middle of the night in pain because of his circulation issues. And I'm like, I should ground him, right? He didn't believe me, <laughs> but I'm like, here, you about to ground. So I started smacking patches all over, you, you ground him tonight. Now he sleeps through the night. He does not get up in pain because now think about it like magnets, right? Red blood cells. If they don't have enough negative ions around the cell, they're gonna kind of clump together and your blood viscosity is gonna be high. It's gonna be very thick. Now, when you're grounded, think about little magnets. Now your blood cells have enough negative ions around them. And now they're they're repelling each other, right? So now your blood is moving freely. Your circulation is moving freely. It's not clumping together. What happens when red blood cells clump together? People get strokes, right? Mm, yeah. I mean, all type of things happen negatively. So, I mean, grounding is, is magical. It, it yeah, honestly, it is. <laughs> it's one hundred percent magical. It is. It is magic. It's yeah. some voodoo stuff. It's. It. Let's take our break right here. When we come back, I'm gonna I'm gonna show everybody uh, uh, actually what we're talking about and uh, get a better idea. All right. It's not who 
No. <laughs> More with Elizabeth after this short break. This is Fade to Black. I'm your Jimmy Church. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNX DB, BX. I'll be the host and MC once again this year for the 2023 Conscious Life Expo, February 10th through the 13th at the LAX Hilton in Los Angeles, California. This is a four-day live event featuring hundreds of speakers, exhibitors, and not to miss special events. Check this out. Linda Moulton Howe, Bashar, Deborah King, Daniel Sheehan, George Norrie, David Wolf, Sean Stone, Danny Brinkley, Susan Slaughter, the Leo King, David Palmer, Scott Walter, and another 200 inspirational speakers. Special events include a disclosure lunch with me, Expo's Got Talent, hosted by me, a seance with Susan Slaughter, the George Nori Forum, and the Leo King is going to DJ at a dance party. Over 200 exhibitors, over 200 speakers. It's the biggest event of the year. Tickets are on sale now at ConsciousLifeExpo.com. For everything you need, info, tickets, schedule, and speakers, please visit ConsciousLifeExpo.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. This is Billy Carson, founder and CEO of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv is the fastest growing and one of the most watched networks in the world. And I would like to personally invite you to check out our expanding library of TV, film, lectures, and special presentations. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv has over 6,000 videos covering lost history, health, UFOs, spirituality, and our future. We are committed to our community. And with my personal invitation, you can right now get your own free 30-day membership at Forbidden ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Your own library of information starts today at ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Because you never got that pony you always wanted. <laughs> Damn it. Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network. Listen, I know and you know that you've always wanted your first crystal skull. Or maybe you're a collector just like me, but you just don't know where to go to find the real thing. Then I met Carolyn Ford over at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Carolyn is the guardian of Einstein, one of the most respected ancient crystal skulls in the world. All of her unique skulls have been imprinted sitting with Einstein in his sacred lodge and are carved from the finest gemstone and materials. Imprinting is the process of receiving the ancient wisdom from the master skull or master computer. Einstein, the ancient crystal skull. To see Carolyn's current collection of crystal skulls, just visit her store at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com or click on the banner over on our site. Don't forget to use the promo code JIMMY at checkout to receive 10% off of your order today. That's promo code JIMMY. Finding your first or next crystal skull is easy. Just visit EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Hello, I'm Katie, and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on Jimmy Church Radio.com. Race Hobbs here, repping the X, and you're locked on to Fade to Black, Black. with my homie Jimmy Church. Powered by the Fader Dots and the UnXNetwork.com. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. We're the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official Fade or Not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright-Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of The Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. 
Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Elizabeth Hoekstra is with us. Tonight, we're talking about grounding. And I, I, I can't stress this enough. Uh, Elizabeth mentioned this to me um, on the air probably, I'm going to say a year, year and a half ago, a year ago. Elizabeth was uh, was on the show, and, and I, I, I tried to fake my way through it. Oh, yeah, sure. I know what grounding is, but... And um, and 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 uh, since then, uh, Elizabeth gifted me uh, a grounding kit uh, when we were in the Bahamas, and and I remember that night uh, we were out to dinner, and Billy looked at me and he goes, "Man, I I can't I I do not sleep without it." All right, and he gave me that that bit when Billy gives you that that. <laughs> face is you need to you you know you need to stop and and pay attention right and and uh, okay so it's not oming right or it's not this isn't uh well it is a spiritual experience but it's not this is uh um mechanical okay Mm -hmm. so i want to show everybody uh what we're talking about Mm -hmm. this is this is a grounding kit, okay? This is a grounding kit. And so what you do is this uh, plugs into your outlet. You have some cables. Um, you, and, uh, you have patches. And these patches, just like EKG, right? Same thing, yeah. right? Same thing. So um, I put these uh, one on each ankle. That's what I do. Um, Elizabeth told me to do something else. I... I stopped listening to Elizabeth. I'm doing my own thing. So, but I put it like right by, you know, uh, but between my ankle bone and my heel, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, on the outside of my legs. Um, so, but that's, these are the patches. And those go on, uh, you can put it anywhere on your body. I put it on my feet, mm-hmm. uh, on my lower feet. And then um, uh, in the kit are a couple of things, but uh, the there are two cables. Uh, in this, well, there's a, a few cables in here, but so a cable that plugs in to this adapter that goes into the wall, right? It's for two two cables. One goes on one foot, one goes on the other. Okay, so in a basic sense, you have to check your wall outlet, and the grounding kit comes with that. You want to make sure that your prop your your outlet is properly grounded. You don't want to be shocked or anything like that. And, and this, so that comes in uh, the kit. And uh, basically, that's it. Um, uh, there are a few other things in, in this kit. I will, you know, uh, some extra outlets and, and, and stuff. But so that's what we're talking about here. All right. So when we're talking about grounding, you're you're putting these patches somewhere on your body. I choose uh, to do it um, um, on, on my feet. And, and then I put the cables off of the end of the bed. Now, um, as we continue tonight, I just want you to picture that. But here's my secret. I love my, my bed is my friend now. All right. Mm-hmm. This is what I did, Elizabeth. Um, uh, Elizabeth sent me a grounding mat uh, for, I have a king size bed. So I have a king size grounding mat that also plugs into the wall. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it, it plugs into, but this is what I did. 1200 thread count Egyptian cotton sheets. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm because you this this experience of grounding <laughs> and of deep sleep yeah. and and this dream thing and and you 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 crawl into those egyptian cotton sheets and it is the most insane experience of your mm-hmm. life yeah. and you get to do it for free <laughs> every single night, man. All you got to do it's like going to Disneyland. You know, it's an e-ticket ride. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and 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 that's 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 how I do it, everybody. That's what's going on. Mm-hmm. 
the experience of falling to sleep so quickly um, yeah. and, and, and deeply, it's, yeah. uh, it's a game changer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's impossible. It is almost impossible to be angry when you're grounded. Go get grounded. If you ever feel angry, go outside, stick your bare feet or your hands on the earth. Sit there for, for 20 minutes. Ground out that stress from your body and you will not be angry because what it does physiologically is it shifts your nervous system, which most of us are, are in fight or flight because of all the stress and the trauma and everything that's been going on on this planet. It's hard for people not to be in fight or flight. Our nervous systems are stuck in fight or flight, sympathetic. That's when your nervous system is in that state, right? Mm-hmm. So when your body and your nervous system is in sympathetic, your cortisol is high. You're getting hits of cortisol. You're getting hits of adrenaline. Now, this is great if you're wanting to get away from a tiger that's about to eat you, right? Because you can run faster. You, you're, you're, Your gut shuts down. The blood from your gut goes to your extremities so you can get up and run or fight. This is great. But not if you don't face that threat all the time. Now, what is the problem is, is our bodies are stuck like this. When you're grounded, it regulates your nervous system. You down regulates. And that's why you could sleep so deeply because your body was able to relax. You grounded out that cortisol. You grounded out that adrenaline. Now you're not getting these stress hormones hitting your nervous system, hitting your physiology all all day, right? You you grounded it out. So now your nervous system can shift shift back into parasympathetic rest and digest, and now you can relax. Right? Yeah, it, 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 you know, after um, uh, the first few days yeah. of of this experience, I was like, "What is going on? <laughs> this is this is crazy," you know. And and there are so many. Um, uh, so many suggestions. I'm just going to go with that. You know, I, how, how to how to sleep, how to have energy, how to diet, how to do, how to focus, how to do this, and it always involves you know taking you know some vitamins or pills or or drinking um, something or you know it's it's always this this that's not that's not what's going on here. You're not doing any of that, and and after three or four days of this, this clarity, this, like this craziness, I'm, I'm literally saying out loud, what the hell yeah. this is, this is something that, that I know, right. That, that I, I can tell, I can feel, yeah. um, it's, it's just an incredible thing. And so, uh, I thought that it was so important, uh, not only, um, uh, to bring you on the show and to talk about it, but for me to share, this is my personal experience. This is not, uh, this is not some, I'm not paid to say this. I'm not, this is not what's going on. This is something that I've experienced myself. And, and I just, I, I, I don't have the words right to put it in. And so I did, I, I, I've, I've been in touch with Billy and Elizabeth. We've been hanging out a lot, but yeah going, I, 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 I can't believe this, you know? And so I did, I, I texted Billy and I go, dude, the secret man, 1200 thread count <laughs> because, because it's part of the experience, right? Mm-hmm. Where you're so comfortable and you're so, um, what's the word you're connected and disconnected at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's important to know also. Um, so the first time I tried grounding, which was a long time ago, I got a sheet off of Amazon and it was a uh, silver threaded. It would have just these little silver threads in it. I've seen I that. Felt great. Yeah. I felt good for about a week and then it kind of died off and I forgot about it. So I, you know, threw it out. It wasn't a big deal. And then a couple of years later, I saw this ad online around Father's Day and it was this grounding kit. And so I decided like I'm a biohacker, let me just try it one more time. Now, this new company that I ordered from Earthing is uh, the founder and CEO of that company is Clint Ober. And Clint Ober is actually the man that rediscovered grounding in the late 1990s. This man has spent over $20 million proving the science 
behind grounding because people thought he was a nut job. You know, go put your feet on on the bare, you know, your bare feet on the earth and you're going to get healthy. People are like, yeah, whatever. You're crazy. Right, so right. all of his money to to prove the science. Long story short, I get a different type of sheet. It's 100 percent carbon. And I get the patch kit as well. Right. And I get a pillowcase. So I tried it out. I put a patch on my solar plexus. I put the sheet on my bed and I laid naked on my bed with this patch on so I could be fully just connected to this sheet because it's 100 percent ground instead of whereas the, the threaded sheets are only a percentage ground and they actually die down and stop working after a while, which is why mine just faded away. And sometimes they can be toxic. So make sure if you do want to purchase this, these grounding products that you're doing your research behind it to make sure that they're actually great products, right? I can vouch for Earthing site because I work straight with that company. So anyways, I put this patch on my solar plexus. I close my eyes and I breathe and I took the deepest breath that I've ever taken in my entire life. I smoked for 20 years, cigarettes. So I was always breathing very high up in my chest because my lungs were not functioning at 100% because I was a smoker. And this is probably maybe three or four years after I quit smoking, but I still was breathing from here up. So when I took this breath, I breathed. I, it went all the way to my pelvic floor. And I was like, I was floored. I almost started crying because I'm like, breath is life. And I've never breathed this deep in my whole life. Have I been living life? You know, it was like a profound experience for me. I'm like, I have to tell everybody about this. So I'm a nerd. I went deep into the research. I went and found Clint Ober. I shot him a message. I'm like, I need to, to know more about this. I need to, to, we need to meet somehow. I need to be a part of this, this mission. And the first time that I met Clint, I actually met his, his um, another CEO from the company, from the earthing company, Olivia Ramirez Smith was with Clint when, when I first met him. And that day I, I watched miracles in front of my eyes, miracles. And basically what happened is we invited a friend of ours who had a pond stroke. Now, a pond stroke is where you literally get locked in your body and you're fully conscious, but you can't move. You can't speak. So it's like you're gone, but you can hear and you can bait everything around you. You're fully conscious, locked in your body, basically. Mm -hmm. So this woman, Brisa, she's an amazing woman. Her story is in our book. Um, she came in the room and she was in a coma for, I think it was over eight months or something. So they had to put a trach in her, in her throat for her to be able to breathe, to eat, everything, right? So after being under for so long and coming out of this stroke, she still had scar tissue from that trach that they had to have you know, in her. So every six months or so, four to six months or so, she would have to go get surgery to basically get the scar tissue out of her throat passage, her airway, so she could breathe properly. So she walks in this meeting with Clint, Olivia, myself, and a couple other, my colleagues, and she's whispering. And we're all like, you know, we can't really hear her. And we're like, what's going on? She had just had that surgery a couple of days ago. So she was trying to tell her story about her pond stroke and while whispering. Now, meantime, Clint Ober takes a patch, puts it on the palm of her hands, and she's just sitting there telling us her story while her she's being grounded. Now, miracle. After about five minutes, her voice starts getting her. Her color in her face starts to return. It's turning pink. I'm like looking at her and I'm like looking around the room. Is anyone else seeing what I'm seeing? Do, do you hear? Because <laughs> she's speaking a little louder. So we're all kind of floored. And then all of a sudden, this is what did it. And I, I couldn't stop anymore. So I'm looking at her and there is a perfect red circle around her throat, just a circle of red around her throat. And I'm just, I'm just like, okay, does anyone else see that? <laughs> Look at her throat. Do you see that? What is happening here? And she started tripping out. She's like, I feel tingly. She's like, I can, she was talking almost full tone at this point. And Clint is sitting there like all relaxed. And he's like, I see this all the time. And he was like, basically what's happening is her, her, her color is coming back because her circulation, now her blood is starting to flow. Blood brings nutrients to different parts of your body. So now the blood is, is focusing here because she had just had that surgery. Now it's healing that area. Now the inflammation is going away. 
she was able to leave that meeting and eat solid food when she was not before able to eat solid food for two to three weeks after that surgery. She went and ate solid food after she left that meeting. I mean, insanity. You know, and, and, and here's the thing. Um, and that's a, a, that's an incredible story. If I, if I, and there are people listening right now going, right. If I hadn't, have, you know, gone through my experience over uh, the last two months, because I'm I'm here to tell you, I woke. It was the next day yeah. that uh, when 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 I woke up that I knew something had changed, yeah. and and I couldn't quite figure it out. And I'm, I've, you know, and all I could do was reach out to you and 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 be like, "What's going on? Yeah. Well, this is this is this is this is amazing." Yeah. And uh, and now I I am fully kitted out. I, I I'm kitted out. My uh, my my bed is a throne, you know, with the with the mat and the cable and the thing and 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 the ritual. Uh, I'm so excited to yeah. to get grounded and and to get into my evening now. Um, this is it, it's never been like this before. For you, um, share with us. I, I wish Billy was here. Um, he's he, he's out buying another ring right now. <laughs> Uh, for you, what is it that you look forward to uh, when you when you get ready to ground at night? Oh man! <laughs> so this is my thing. When whenever we travel, we travel a ton, and sometimes the the outlets when we go to these different countries, they don't have properly grounded outlets or the same type of ground that we do in the U.S. So I'm always bringing my stuff with me. But sometimes I can't ground. We were in Egypt. I did not ground when we were in Egypt at all. And I could immediately feel it. My body started hurting. Ever since I started grounding, I used to have terrible back pain because I was in gymnastics for 16 years. So that's a lot on your body. Huge, terrible back pain. Since I started grounding, I don't have pains ever. I don't wake up in pain. There's zero, zero pain. Same right. with Bill. Yeah. So, I mean, when I'm on these trips and I can't ground, it's like the pain starts to come back. You know, the, the let lethargy starts coming back. It's just like, oh, and I cannot wait to get home and to ground. <laughs> like as soon as I walk through the door. <laughs> I went through the same thing in Egypt. So I, you know, I brought uh, the grounding kit mm. and I couldn't get it to work in the first hotel that we were in, which was four seasons. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and, and I remember that night, I'm like, man, I can't ground. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was so upset. And, and, and oh, okay, but you're right. Uh, uh, driving home uh, from the airport after Egypt. Yeah. The whole way. I'm grounding tonight, man. I can't <laughs> wait to get home. I am grounding. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Oh, it's yeah. a bizarre change of lifestyle. Yeah, it's it it is well let's talk about the fact that that you don't even need to buy these products to be grounded right you can literally walk outside put your bare feet on the ground and sit there palms of your hands bare feet on the ground you are connected you are getting the same healing powers that the inside sheets the patches the pillowcases the same things that they're providing you this thing is free it is free health for women especially women i i beg them I beg them to go outside and ground the stress out. Women process things in a different way than men do. Just, you know, our, our bodies are different. We're more emotional. Things affect us on a different level. We get stressed out very, very easily. We also have the family, the husband, the job. It's it's just stress, 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 stress all the time. And we we internalize that. And that creates dis-ease within our systems. A lot of inflammation for these busy women, men, whoever it may be. Please go outside after your workday, sit on the ground, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and you will start noticing these changes within yeah. your body. Walk, walk, walk around your yard through the grass yeah. and uh, in your bare feet and just go out there and stand. Um, it, 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 it's the exact same thing. You're, you're, you're grounding into the earth. Yes. Which is... Yes. That's it. So the static, the noise that you hear in an electronic gear and all of that, that's ungrounded equipment. Yeah. The reason why it's pure and it's clean is when it's grounded correctly. It's yeah. the same thing with your body. 
your brain is a frigging computer with uh, electric signals jumping all over, uh, you know, and it's, it's getting grounded. It's a mind blowing. It's, it's, it's almost too much to handle. Um, your book, um, I've got uh, the link for it. Um, when does it release? The pre-order starts on Friday. Yeah, well, we actually launched pre-orders uh, yesterday. Okay. Yesterday we launched pre-order. Yep, yep. And it should be out within the next three weeks. Uh, I'm predicting mid, mid-November, mid-November. And uh, really quick, who's your co-author? My co-author is Olivia Ramirez-Smith. She works directly with Clint Ober and has been his right-hand woman for a long, long time and has seen miracles happen, has on the same mission as I am. We want to ground, we will, we're not, we don't want to, we will. We will ground over 1 million people, me and her together. So, I mean, it's it's just, we see the most profound effects and, and people are healing and healing and feeling better and less stressed. We don't have to be so stressed out. It's just, it's a little bit ridiculous to me when, when, Honestly, all you really have to do, not all you have to do, because it is a lifestyle, you have to have healthy habits and everything. But this is such a big part of it, such a big part of it. And it's free and everybody can do it. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it, it's it's optional for, for people to be healthy. And people are dying and they don't know why. Now, this is a profound statement. I started really, really pondering this and thinking about this. I'm like, all of this autoimmune disease, all of this inflammation, these fires in our systems, it's unnecessary. Do you know that it's impossible to have MS when you are grounded? Now you have the cellular damage that the, the disease has caused, right, in your cells, but you do not have current MS when you are grounded. Now think about that. <laughs> like, I mean, this is a magical cure. And all you have to do is get connected to the earth. Yeah, and and the buildup um, that I was doing over time, because I thought about this, I've been reading the books now and, and trying to figure out why uh, I'm, I'm suddenly different, right? Yeah, um, that over, <laughs> you know, man, I, I wore, I, I have, and you know this, I have the most insane collection of shoes, Adidas. <laughs> I love my Adidas. Wearing them right now. There you go. Brand new. And, and, uh, and, but all day, right? Wearing them all disconnected, disconnected, mm -hmm. completely insulated from the earth all day. Yeah. The build up, the build up, the build up, the build up, the build up. You wake up in the morning, put on shoes and socks. You get out of the car, you know, put your shoes on. You're, you're completely insulated from the mm -hmm. earth. And this has been built up and suddenly it's gone. And mm -hmm. it, it's just a tremendous, tremendous experience for me personally, uh, what I've gone through. Let's take our break right here. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Elizabeth Hoekstra is with us. The links for the new book are below. We've got them on social media. Uh, it's a great cover, too, by the way. More with Elizabeth when we come back after this short break. Stay with us. <laughs> Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. <laughs> ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. ¡Claro que sí! The Believer is the chilling true story of Dr. John Mack, a renowned Harvard psychiatrist and Pulitzer Prize winner. This is an outreach program from the cosmos to the consciously impaired. He risked it all to investigate human encounters with aliens. The Believer, Alien Encounters, Hard Science, and The Passion of John Mack. Written by award-winning former New York Times journalist and author Ralph Blumenthal. Now available in paperback from High Road Books. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the Fader Knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. 
It's a Boulder Cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder, but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Rivermooncoffee.com. Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Fade or not, when you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. (laughs) Hi, I'm Ray Sobs, and I'm here to tell you about something I really think you're going to like. The Unex Network is a part of a larger group called Unex Media, and one of the things we offer is the quarterly Unex Magazine, which is available both in print and digital formats. This amazing magazine covers all aspects of the unexplained, and makes for a great coffee table periodical that is certain to spark enlightening conversations in your living rooms. We invite you to check out the latest digital issue for free. Just go to unxnetwork.com forward slash membership and fill out your free membership with your name and email and become a new free member. The new summer issue is now available and the theme is Time Anomalies, which includes a feature article written by our managing editor, Lee Spiegel. Just go to unxnetwork.com Network.com forward slash memberships. That's unexnetwork.com forward slash memberships and get your free e copy of the Unex magazine today. You are listening to Fate to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back, Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. I guess tonight, Elizabeth Hoekstra. We're talking about grounding and her book. Um, you can you can get it now. It's going to be released in three weeks. Pre-orders are happening. The links are below. 
Um, one of the books uh, that Elizabeth sent me is this one here. It's called Earthing, and uh, you can go and find it and, and you can go to Elizabeth's website. And also the, the Earthing website is, is below too as well. Um, but uh, so I, I, I actually had to run and go get this. It's on my nightstand. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I had to figure out uh, what was going on. And now, uh, here's I'm, I'm going to share a couple of things. Um, uh, there's so much talk about getting to REM, right? Mm-hmm. Get to that part of sleep, the deep sleep. That's when you know that you know you are sleeping. Is when you get to you know real deep sleep and you're in the REM state. Um, I don't know how I can do this because I would be asleep. But I, I'm wondering now how long it takes me to fall asleep. Is it five minutes? Is it six minutes? Is it seven minutes? Uh, I, I don't know because I'm there to time it, right? I, but it is immediate. And so this is, um, I want to share this with everybody. So I've got the TV on, right? Mm-hmm. I get all wired up. You know, I crawl into bed and and I'll pull something that normally I would watch for a couple hours, right? I'm just mm-hmm. like, five, four, three, two. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> <"Hey, you know." laughs> boom, it lights out. It, yeah. It's like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it. Uh, uh, I, I, I can't I can't explain it. Yeah. It's never been like this before uh, in my entire life. How long do you think, uh, Elizabeth? And what is uh, what does Clinton say about how long does it take you now to to fall asleep? Well, I think that varies for everybody, but you can actually measure it now. They have things. They have wearables, right? I have an aura ring, so it, I actually track my sleep. And when I don't ground, my sleep is not as optimal as when I do ground. Um, when you ground, or when I personally ground, I fall asleep very, very, very quickly because, like I said before, your nervous system down regulates, right? It, it downshifts into parasympathetic, rest and digest. Now you're nice and calm. You don't have that cortisol and adrenaline flowing through your body, which actually wakes you up, makes you more alert. So now you're in a very, very calm and peaceful state. Now, getting into these deeper levels of sleep during the first um, half of the night, you go from light to deep sleep, right? And in your deep sleep, you have these long delta waves. If you measure your brain waves, long delta waves, you don't dream in in deep sleep, but that's when your body detoxes. So it's really, really great. You need to get into this level of sleep. Now, after deep sleep towards mm, maybe between... 3 and 8 a.m. in the morning, it's towards the last half of your sleep, you'll have that REM sleep. That's when your brain is detoxifying. These states of sleep are much easier to get into when your body is is regulated. Now, something else that's very interesting about earthing, which I forgot to mention earlier, like I said, I travel a lot. When I don't have my grounding equipment with me and when I don't have a proper ground to be able to plug in, I love to just go outside and either stick my feet into the ground if it's clean or find an ocean, right? Salt water. That is the place where you will be the most grounded. It is surrounding your entire body. You are sucking up all of those electrons, all of those negative ions. Makes and what sense. it does, yes, what it does is it actually regulates your, your body and it regulates your, your circadian rhythm to that part of the earth wherever you're at. So it ixnays jet lag, okay, which is wild, wild. They did a study on this. They measured cortisol between, I forgot how many subjects it was. They did a study. And for the first, I think, I don't know, four weeks, these people were not grounded. They would measure their cortisol every four hours during the day. And it showed all of these different spikes of cortisol that happened every, every, you know, randomly throughout the day. Now, when these people got grounded, and they all stayed grounded, their cortisol levels spiked at the exact same time, okay? (laughs) They were grounded to that part of the earth. So it fixes your circadian rhythm. It literally, it happened to me. I went from Michigan to Cali, and Cali is three hours behind Michigan, Pacific Mm -hmm. time, right? I'm used to waking up at 6 a.m. every single morning. I pop up. I'm up. I'm ready to start my day. In Cali, 
three hours prior, right? But my body regulated to that. I popped up at exactly 6 a.m. in Cali the day after I arrived. <laughs> like, wild. This stuff is, is a miracle. It literally is a miracle. Uh, uh, so my personal experience uh, experiences uh, with Billy and, and Elizabeth around this. So we go to the Bahamas. I haven't started grounding yet. Mm -hmm. And and uh, forget about the time change and the jet lag and, and all of that. Um, let's put that to the side. I'm trying to keep up with you two. <laughs> we had stuff planned all day long for, from the moment we got up all the way to the, to the end of the night. I'm just like, man, what kind of coffee are you guys drinking? Man? I just can't, I can't, I'm, I, I, man, I'm starting to feel old. Plus I was running around with Gabe too as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, you guys were grounding. Yeah. Right. And, and I didn't, now everything makes sense yeah. to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have this thing that, that is, that is happening all day long that, that I've never had before. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I understand why it's, yeah. It's tremendous. And the second thing I want to share with everybody. So we get to Egypt and our first day there, we, we go to the bent pyramid. Yeah. And uh, now there's lots of stories about the mm -hmm. physical side of experiencing uh, the bent pyramid and the bent pyramid. Uh, everybody is no joke. <laughs> yeah. It is not, it, it's, you, this is a, something that both uh, physically and spiritually, you need to understand what you're, you're about to do. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I thought I'd read, I knew everything, you know, so uh, this is the truth. I'm going to just, <laughs> so Billy and I and Elizabeth, we we got we've got seventy people behind us. We got a camera crew. We've got security, mm -hmm. and and Billy and I and Elizabeth are leading this thing, and we're walking up to the Bent Pyramid. Yeah, and uh, they're uh, outside, and this the Bent Pyramid is ginormous. It's not. It's just as big as the Great Pyramid. It's huge, and but there are these wooden stairs that go up about a third of the way up on the outside of the pyramid. Yeah. And Elizabeth turns to me. <laughs> she goes, are you ready? And I'm like, come on, come on Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, and she goes, Jimmy, are you, are you, I, I'm ready. I'm ready. And so everybody's behind us and we go up the stairs, Billy's in front and, uh, and we walk through and we go to the, the tunnel which descends a, a few hundred feet straight down. And I watch Billy uh, do his thing. Mm -hmm. Dude, you know, okay. So Elizabeth was just like, poop, 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 backwards, <laughs> down, and disappears, just yeah. like that. And I'm looking, I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> and I'm looking, and, and, and this, 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 this energy, this physical thing, this energy. And, and I watch you disappear. Mm -hmm. I gotta, I, I gotta face my, I gotta, I gotta do this right. I can't let Elizabeth show me up, uh -huh. and I've got people behind me. Yeah. Elizabeth is gone. <laughs> gone, gone. So I, you know, and 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 Elizabeth, you're checking up on me. You're like, you okay? Yeah, no, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna deal with this. And we started taking pictures, and and we did all of that. But it's a physical and spiritual journey that your body and your mind has to be ready for. Mm. And, and, and grounding and experiencing that, the two of them go together. Oh, yeah. right? and, and you and Billy demonstrated that we called it Billy Boot Camp. Uh -huh. But is, you have to be balanced. Yeah. You have to be ready for this, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. It is a lot on your body. A lot. There's a lot of climbing, crawling. You have to go through these dirty, small, tiny, little smelly tunnels. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot to, to go through. And even the outside of the pyramid, walking up those wooden steps, that was a lot of steps to walk up. It's very, very physically tiring. Tiring. It is. And uh, 
honestly, I, I could have did it maybe 20 times though. <laughs> I felt I was okay. <laughs> Man, so. man, man, what, what, uh, uh, there's something about, uh, the combination of the, the next time that, uh, and we've got some things planned, right? Mm -hmm. But my next, uh, I'm going to handle Egypt, uh, differently and grounding has got to be a part of it. I wasn't able to ground, uh, while I was there, there's got to be a way to circumvent, like you said, right? barefoot you know and what was i doing i'm wearing shoes i you know they, you need to prepare for this stuff yeah, um, yeah. Uh, uh you need to be able to just go out if you can't get the kit going i would have handled the bent pyramid different and uh, the rest of egypt had i been grounding uh properly it's a, yeah. it's well, I mean, it's it's also, it's cumulative, cumulative, right? The healing is cumulative. So you had only been grounding for a couple of weeks prior to Egypt. Now think about you next year, when we go back to Egypt, you have been grounding for over a year. So that's, your body is going to feel different. You are going to recover differently because now you've had cumulative grounding for all of this time. And like I said before, I mean, what grounding does is it gives your body the the tools that it needs to function optimally and properly. So you're cleaning up all of that inflammation within yourself, any damage that might've been done over your years of being ungrounded and all the toxicity that we got to deal with in this world and all the poison food that we got to eat. I mean, all of that stuff builds and builds and builds into your system, toxicity and inflammation. It's just, we're full of gunk, right? So now grounding helps get rid of all of that. All of that. So now you're going to have a different experience next year. I promise. Yeah, yeah, promise. totally. And and here's the thing. Um, and and I know I know what people uh, are thinking right now as they listen to you and I talk. They're going, ah, "Come on, yeah. no, you don't right. get it right." Mm -hmm. And now I was not. Listen to me. I was not prepared. <laughs> Elizabeth gives me this kit and mm -hmm. sends me on my way. I didn't know. I'm plugging in. and and But the thing is, is when I called you back the next day, you, the first thing, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Yeah. You, yeah. I, you, the things that I said to you were not a surprise. And you were laughing. You yeah, were no. laughing. <laughs> <'Cause> I knew. <laughs> because you knew, right? I, and you hear this over and over again when, when you do... Uh, you know, when you introduce somebody to this, I do, I do. I get messages all day, all day about, wow, grounding has changed my life. I'm grounding my whole family. Now this has changed. That's changed. Even my son, ever since I started grounding, I've grounded Gabe. Gabe has been grounded. And what I noticed with him, and you tell me if you feel the same way, Jimmy, I noticed that he is very connected with the earth. Unlike other kids, that are disconnected. He's very, he loves the earth. He loves nature. He hates, and I'm talking, he'll get mad, frustrated, almost cry when he sees people litter. He hates it because he respects and loves the earth so much. And I think that has to do with grounding because before then he was not, it was not, he was not as, as obsessed with earth as he is now. Now he loves nature. He just wants to be outside. I mean, he, he loves mother earth. Period. And his, he's, he's so calm and, and he's not calm. I mean, he's high energy, but he's very, it, it's, it's a different type of energy that you have when you're grounding. It's like, you're more grounded. <laughs> oh, I'm going to show everybody. This is two men, Billy and I texting, right? Mm -hmm. I literally said, dude, I had the best grounding dreams last night. <laughs> and, and then I said, uh, I, I mentioned earlier, here's the secret. 1200 Thread County Egyptian Cotton. <laughs> the bomb. Right? <laughs> this is Billy and I texting back and forth. It's, it's like that. This is... Uh, this is uh, uh, friends communicating, everybody. This is uh, a, a, a private uh, conversation where this is what I'm sharing. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm going through this extraordinary uh, uh, life change, and, and I, I just had no idea. Yeah. I had none. 
Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, it's just, it's very sad to me that we've lost our connection. We've lost it so much so that, that this is woo woo to people. And I just, I want those people that, that think that this is woo woo, just try it, go outside and ground 30 minutes a day for the next week and just see how you feel. Look up the research. They have done double blind studies proving the science behind this. It's not placebo. It's not placebo. And that's another thing. Billy didn't believe me. <laughs> he was like, whatever, you know, I'm just going to make her happy by wearing these patches. He did not believe me. He didn't. He was just like, oh, okay, let's yeah. do this one. Yeah, be until, careful. Yeah. Until his, his, his shoulder healed. He had a torn labrum. He couldn't even lift his shoulder like this. He couldn't go like that with his, his, his phone. He couldn't hold his phone like that. It was impossible for him to lift his shoulder. About a week after grounding, he was like, He's like, something's happening here. This is this is different. He's like, something is, is working. Kept doing it. And now he's able to, he plays basketball for three hours a day. <laughs> it's like, I mean. <laughs> now, uh, here, here's, uh, uh, I want to share this with um, everybody. Uh, we were talking about Dendera, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, when I went up, to, I, I was wearing flip-flops without socks, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm in my shorts. And when I went to ascend, uh, descend, I should say, uh, down, uh, the priest turns to me and he says, you must take off your shoes. Think about that for a second. I took, I, now I'm barefoot. I'm barefoot. Yeah. I'm grounding. I didn't know. The Egyptians know these things. So uh, we're talking about 5,000 years ago, Dendera, right? 4,000 years ago. Yeah. So now I'm grounding. You go down these stone steps, uh, I, I, I don't know, 50 feet, you know, whatever, four or five stories underground. It's a, it's, it's, you, you're down there a long ways. Mm -hmm. You're grounding and, and, and it's moist, right? The stones are cool and damp. Grounding. I'm grounding every step going down. What do I do? I walk out into the water, right? Yeah. Oh, this, this thing, right? And I'm splashing and I'm doing, I think I'm going through a ceremony, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm doing what I'm told out there, but yeah. I'm grounding. Yeah. Right? So I turn back around and I'm going up the stairs and that's when the craziness started. This is before you and I met outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did I do? I grounded. And the yeah. the Egyptians knew about this process. Mm -hmm. And whatever whatever you want to apply to it. I was uh I was talking to Jay Widener on the phone. He's he knows so much about Egypt and 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 alchemy and and hermeticism and all of this. And I and 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 I'm telling him about the process, Elizabeth, taking the shoes off, going down, splashing the water, going back up. And I went through this trend and and we were discussing the steps of all of this because there's a there's a chemical change, there's an electrical change. Him and I were talking about I, the grounding part is key here. Yeah. It's a key part of this. You're introducing all of these things, uh, you know, and your brain is going through uh, this electron at temperature change as, as well, because you go from the sunlight to the yeah. coolness. Uh, yeah. all, and, and I said to Jay, the Egyptians had it all figured out. Yeah. Think, just think about this for a second, the simple process yeah. of taking off your shoes and ascending down to this lake going through this process, going back up and into the sunlight and poof, right. This thing happens. Mm -hmm. They've got it all figured out. And it was, yeah. I think grounding had everything to do with it. And that's what I told Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you remember a lot of the, the women especially came out of the Hathor temple in Dendera and they started crying. They were all crying. Very emotional. Yeah. In tears. Yes. Yes. Now think about it. Their, their nervous systems are on high alerts, right? They're crying. They're feeling very emotional. They're on 10. Their nervous systems are on 10. So they go down and they do that. Now their body regulates. That's a shift that you feel deeply within your body, within your energy, within your emotions. You feel that deeply. 
So a lot of those people, I feel, downregulated, came out and was able to really energetically feel that experience so much deeper because they were able to come back into homeostasis by grounding. <laughs> and, 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 and one of the, this is where I'm just going to be straight with everybody. One of the things that gets under my skin um, and it started when I was young is, you know, you know, uh, uh, pyramid power or, or there to, uh, Truly, and, and, and things and and sent and burning and and this this new agey vibe it turned yeah. me off. Yeah. Still does in a large. Mm -hmm. it, it, it does. I am a guitar playing heavy metal man. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. You need to listen to me, people. I am telling you that I walked out of that those stairs going through this thing and I'm trying to figure out what is going on. And for me to express this uh, to the world, I, I, I don't know how you want to take it. It doesn't matter to me. There's something going on. And, and when I, uh, when Elizabeth and I met out there, we were both going through this thing and I'm, I, I can't, I don't want to be that new agey guy. I don't want to be that dude with bell bottoms and a tie dye shirt, you know, peace and love. I, you know, I did, no, that that that's a turnoff to me. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I'm facing it, right? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, what the heck, man? Yeah. What, what is it? What is, I'm not supposed to be this guy. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a heavy metal dude. <laughs> and, and 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 there you go, man. Everything is just lit up and opened up, Elizabeth. And and I I, I have you to thank for all of this. Yeah, I, it's just it's so important to me, and it's just it's it's honestly it's a miracle. It's magic. It's magic. It's just so simple too. And when you think about it, before the 1960s. We had leather shoes. Leather is conductive. You know, the moisture, your feet sweat, the moisture from your feet ensure that that conductivity between the earth and your foot and your body. So we never were supposed to be disconnected. So this is brand new. I mean, these these health issues that we have these days. I mean, there's a freaking urgent care on every corner. Right. There's hospitals all over the place. Now, back in the 1950s, they didn't have all that. You went to the doctor because of a, a, a huge injury or something, something major was going on, but it was not autoimmune disease. It was not all these, this dis-ease within the system. We were connected. We were connected to the earth. So all this started happening more recently. And yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I, I did it myself. I did it myself and I still do. Like I said, I love my Adidas, man. <laughs> I'm wearing Adidas pants. I've got Adidas socks. With my <laughs> shoes, but I can do it because I know I'm going to be grounding here in a few minutes. Let's take our break. Our guest, the one and only Elizabeth Hoker, got engaged today. Oh, man. <laughs> got engaged. Did you guys set a date? No. no. <laughs> I'm still trying to trying to process what happened. <laughs> Who's the best man? <laughs> we'll, be right <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Rob Halford, the Mental Guard on JimmyChurchRadio.com Your 1 million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse KUNX DB BX The Believer is the chilling true story of Dr. John Mack a renowned Harvard psychiatrist and Pulitzer Prize winner. This is an outreach program from the cosmos to the consciously impaired. He risked it all to investigate human encounters with aliens. The Believer, Alien Encounters, Hard Science, and The Passion of John Mack. Written by award-winning former New York Times journalist and author Ralph Blumenthal. Now available in paperback from High Road Books. Are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. 
This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B blend. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. Ray Sobs here, repping the X, and you're locked on to Fade to Black. Black with my homie Jimmy Church. Powered by the Fader Dots and the UnXNetwork.com. I'll be the host and MC once again this year for the 2023 Conscious Life Expo. February 10th through the 13th at the LAX Hilton in Los Angeles, California. This is a four-day live event featuring hundreds of speakers, exhibitors, and not-to-miss special events. Check this out. Linda Moulton Howe, Bashar, Deborah King, Daniel Sheehan, George Nori, David Wolf, Sean Stone, Danny Brinkley, Susan Slaughter, the Leo King, David Palmer, Scott Walter, and another 200 inspirational speakers. Special events include a disclosure lunch with me. Expo's Got Talent, hosted by me. A seance with Susan Slaughter, the George Norrie Forum. And the Leo King is going to DJ at a dance party. Over 200 exhibitors, over 200 speakers. It's the biggest event of the year. Tickets are on sale now at ConsciousLifeExpo.com. For everything you need, info, tickets, schedule, and speakers, please visit ConsciousLifeExpo.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2B Blend for 15% off of your order today. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, our guest, the one and only Elizabeth Hoekstra. Elizabeth, we have done a lot of stuff this year. We have. We have uh, been all over the country, all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's just been it's just been an amazing year. Uh, just, mm-hmm. I look back at it now and just think, we did all of that? Man, you know, and we haven't stopped. And uh, we're just going to continue. We've got a lot of exciting things going on. Um, But I want to swing back to uh, an experience uh, that you and I had. I said that I wouldn't show any selfies. Mm -hmm. But something strange happened uh, to to you and I. And Billy was there, too. But um, we went to the Egyptian Civilization uh, Museum. That's what Mm -hmm. it's called. And uh, it, it, it's new. It was incredible. We got to see all of the mummies and and Ramses, uh, Ramses, number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think there was nine, nine of the Ramses uh, uh, downstairs. That was that was pretty incredible. Anyway, so Elizabeth and I uh, and Billy, uh, we we shot some video and we're shooting stuff and we're walking through, but we went up to the statue of Akhenaten. Mm-hmm. And you and I are standing there, and and then you go, 
what's up with that nipple? And I, said, I said, oh, my God. <laughs> there, the, 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 and, and so here's the picture. Right? <laughs> and so Elizabeth and I are standing there, and we see this right there. <laughs> And, and 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 so we took the selfie. Um, what, Elizabeth, what what's going on? We're talking about a pharaoh, a statue that is carved by an artisan, and it looks to me that uh, Akhenaten is pulling down right there, pulling down his top and exposing his boob right now the other one's covered right mm -hmm. but on this side we've got this what, what what what's happening there and you and i you remember as we walked around and we're looking at it and uh got all of the angles in and uh but uh what, what's going on uh with that i'm just gonna say it. there's a nipple uh, <laughs> that's exposed and it's 10 foot tall too as well. Yeah. Yeah, that was a very I was very taken back. The first time I saw it last year, I I was like very very feminine feminine body. <laughs> it's a woman's body. <laughs> that guy over there has a woman's body. <laughs> what's, what's going on? <laughs> and then I th yeah, this last time that we went together when we took that picture is the first time I noticed the nipple. So I <laughs> still mm. <laughs> I know, right? I, that, that, that's, that's what um, uh, so much has been made of uh, Akhenaten over the years. Look, he uh, attempted to, it was short lived, but he attempted to, uh, uh, you know, bring a new Egypt together, you know, get the priest out and, and, um, uh, Ra, one god, right? The sun god, and 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 build a new capital city. Of course, he was his wife was uh, Nefertiti, and um, upsets uh, the establishment of fifteen hundred years of practice of the priests at the temples making money. Right? This this was a uh, this was a lifestyle for the priest. Um, and, and, uh, what a way of making uh, a living and, and getting rich. So we understand that part of Akhenaten. Yeah. Nobody talks about this, <laughs> that right there. Why, why do you think that do you, you can look at, you said it yourself, look at the hips, the tummy, right? The shape, um, was Akhenaten a woman? I, I, alien, alien, alien woman, body, man, face, head. <laughs> I, I mean, I could not, and he had, he had kids, right? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Just crazy. A lot of kids. Yeah, I think he had five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I, I, I'm, I, I was talking to Jay Widener, and uh, I sent him uh, these pictures uh, that you and I took together. And he goes, you're right. It's right there. I said, hey, I'm telling you. Yeah. And Jay said, uh, I'm going to have to uh, reassess all of this. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what to to make of this. We all knew about it, you know, the shape of his head and 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 the, uh, you know, the elongated skull and, and 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 the, you know, and he always had these pronounced hips. But nobody um, has talked about this before. And and I just don't get it. There's there is something I don't think that Akhenaten disapproved of this statue. Mm. Right? This takes months to carve. Yeah. yeah. Right? right. And you're posing for it. It's done with intention exactly. and with his approval. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? Yeah. yeah. Is there another way to look at it? I don't think there is. No, I really think that's just the way he looked. And he was okay with it. <laughs> and and everybody else was too. Maybe it was normal. Maybe there were more hymns walking around. I, I don't know. Baffled. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's so many. Uh, uh, Egypt is full of secrets. Yeah. 
right? Egypt is full of secrets. And the more that we look, the more questions that we have. Um, I'm trying to get these questions answered. But when you when you tour Egypt, uh, you've done this. You know, this is my first time over there. Um, you you find out very very quickly that th- there we're talking about thousands and thousands of years of maturity, of growth, of understanding, of understanding the mind, of understanding spirituality, of understanding what it is to be human. And the rest of the world is way behind Egypt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think our, our, we've just, I, I feel like we might've lost our way along the line, all of this conditioning that we have endured um, and generation after generation and the trauma that that we've held within our bodies, within our minds. And then it expels onto a people as generational trauma. And we've really gotten away from, from our centers which is a divine nature that all of us has. We, we all have that. We all have the power within us to create and live our best lives without trauma, without stress, without drama. But it's, we've lost our way. And uh, it's my intention, I know your intention to really help people find that power within themselves again. And that's what I hope to do <laughs> with everything I do. So I, I wanted to ask you, um, you, you did a post personally, you and I have talked about this a lot, uh, 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 the last year, year and a half, but you did a post the other day about, um, finding the energy. Um, I'm paraphrasing here mm-hmm. to cut negative people out of your life. Yeah. That that is one of the most fundamental things that you can do for yourself is to do that, yeah. and that that's a profound statement, and and I think that a lot of people are afraid of you know what they would call a friendship, right, or or the the excuse of uh, putting up with and allowing negativity uh, to surround you. But it is probably the most fundamental, important thing that you can do, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's not only on a mental level when people are are like that. They're very negative. Energy vampires is what I call them. Um, and they, they pull on your energy. You feel bogged down. But literally, their stress hormones come on to you. You, they travel through waves in the air and you they hit your physical body. They hit your energy. You can literally feel it inside your body when someone is stressed, negative, going through things. You can feel that if you're if you're connected. Right. And and it's it's just you got to just love people from a distance sometimes. And I had to let a lot of my old friends go because it's just I, I'm trying to be on this enlightened light path. And a lot of my friends were still on their same frequency, same negative path, right? They were kind of pulling on, on my energy. And it's not that I, I don't like my friends. I love my friends, but I love them from a distance. Now I just can't spend high quality amounts of time with people that are pulling on me all the time, because in order for me to be my best self, the best mom, I can be the best woman. I can be to my man, the best friend I can be to, to my, my friends and family. I, I have to have that space for myself. I have to feel whole, complete and loved within myself. And I can't do that when I have the negativity surrounding me. It's impossible. It's impossible. So I choose distance. I think that, and this is my own personal experience, uh, the way that I view things, it's not inherited. I don't think that this comes from, uh, uh, your parents or, you know, that it's, it's part of your DNA or no, I, 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 because I can look at my own siblings and see the differences from all of us and who I No, I, I, this is something that you need to do for yourself. Uh, and, and, and don't make excuses. Uh, I, I think that excuses, well, I've, you know, I've, you know, the man is holding me back. My parents did the, you know, the, the, the childhood trauma. That's all excuses. I agree. It's, it's, I agree. 
you know what I mean? And it frustrates me when I hear people say that. I'm like, man, you need to, you need to look at yourself. It yeah. all comes from within because we all have those stories, right? We all got drama that we have dealt with. We, we all do, right? It's, it's how you choose to make your life uh, not only choices, your life's choices, but to not have excuses. Do not point fingers. No. no the no. only person to blame is yourself. Yeah, I agree. 1000%. I agree. And I mean, it's the victim mentality that gets me. And I try not to, I try to really be empathetic towards people that are going through things and have that victim mentality and always blame other people and other things because they just don't know. They just don't know. And honestly, their bodies, you can actually get your physical body will get addicted to these stress hormones. So you will create drama unconsciously just so your body can get that hit of cortisol that mm-hmm. you want, that you're unconsciously needing. So it's, it's almost a cycle and it's very difficult to break. So I try not to look down on people that are in that victim mentality or that are negative people because those negative thought patterns are very, very hard to break. So it takes a very strong being and a very determined being to be able to get over those humps and really reach the other side of power. It's not fun. (laughs) It's not fun dealing with your trauma and going through these things and feeling your emotions and, and doing the shadow work. It's not fun, but on the other side is amazing. The, the energy and the, the manifestations and the life that you can create for yourself after dealing with your stuff. Yes. I mean, it's magical. (laughs) I literally, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you're, if you're, you know, you know, doing the blame game, you know, and, and pointing fingers in this victim mentality, people aren't attracted to that. No, you take your power away. If people aren't attracted to you, you, you want to surround yourself with people that um, uh, are, are, are positive, yeah. that are going to support you, uh, that uh, are going to laugh with you and, and, and all, but you're not going to have that support group around you if you're just complaining and blaming and pointing fingers and why me and and this, and this is, you know, I'm being held back because of this, because nobody wants to hang out with you. No. <laughs> nobody wants that, no. you know, and it's, 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 it's so funny to me. It's frustrating when, when I have to uh, listen to somebody to, and I've got to come back with man, you know what? Uh, this really isn't my thing. This, this isn't my kind of conversation. I don't give advice. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I do. I do on the radio, right? I I won't do that in a conversation. Mm -hmm. I I don't want to upset myself. I don't want to upset them. I'll just stop it and just go, you know what? I got to go. I've got, I got another call. I've got, I got to do this, but I I can't engage in that conversation. It it just, it it just, it, it frustrates me. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. And then you walk away feeling bogged down (laughs) and exhausted. Like I sometimes have to go take naps after hearing hearing people vent. (laughs) It's like, that's enough. (laughs) I need a nap. Like I can't, I mean, it's, it's exhausting. So you can't, you can't expect to be successful and happy all the time when you're surrounding yourself with people like that, or when you are a person like that, because you really, you take away your own power. You're telling the universe that it's because of this outside thing that this is happening to me. That's that's literally telling the universe, I have no power. Everything outside of me is controlling everything that I'm doing. My power is gone. I'm just letting things happen to me. No, no, no. I control what happens to me. I control my life. I control my mood, my energy, everything. I am in control because I have the power to create whatever I want. So that I carry that. I feel that deeply. And because I've done the shadow work, because I've dealt with a lot of my trauma and everything, I, I'm able to say that and mean it and mean it from the bottom of my soul. I can feel it. I can feel my power. And I mean, (laughs) what's manifested for me in my life is magical since I started doing the work and getting away from those negative thought patterns, getting away from the energy vampires. It's just, I've seen my life take a complete 180 change and it's amazing and I'm grateful for it every single day. <laughs> the um 
uh, going back to Egypt for a second, we got, well, it's about 80 people, mm-hmm. right? All, all inclusive, every, you know, the, the team. And, and then of course, uh, everybody that came along with us, that's, that's a pretty large group of people. Yeah. We set the tone from the very first night. Absolutely. And the um and I remember uh Billy and I uh went we gre- went from table to table to table, greeted everybody, introduced right to everybody there, it got everybody else together, and suddenly from that very first night, I was watching these friendships manifest. I was I was and so were you, right? We went through 10 days. Not one negative thing happened. It was magical. Not one. Not one. Not I was one. Like, nothing, 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 nothing happened. No. Something happened to my knees uh, in the bed. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, but nothing, nothing happened. I couldn't have asked for a better group. I was a little nervous. Okay. I was like, oh, this is a lot of people. There's always a bad apple. There's always drama. There's always things. I don't want to have to deal with the drama. And I'm like, but that's going to be on me because Billy is the host. And I'm like, you know, ah, so I was nervous. I was nervous about it. To my surprise, literally everybody, they were so pleasant. I, I, I love, I, I really look at them like family. I'm so excited to meet back up with those people. I feel like they're family. Because they were just, I mean, it was exhausting, sleep deprivation, exhaustion, physical exhaustion. And still, still, everybody had a beautiful, amazing, and positive attitude. And it just made the trip so life-changing. And we're and still, really, and the group is still together, too, as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. we're, we're all, uh, you know, we're all just a, a family now. But, but the, the point being that there was zero negativity yep, right zero. that that part of it if anything whatever that stuff was left at the door yeah. it was such a positive uh experience and yeah. that is because you're surrounding yourself with positive people yeah. and that's the best example that i can give to everybody is that you know what one bad little thing could have ruined it for everybody very quickly and we've yeah. also that happened um but, but not no no not on this trip that was amazing yeah yeah those um, people are amazing <laughs> now uh, i i want to uh, address something that i've i've been trying to tell people um on this program i've i there were two things there was a hundred but there were two things that blew my mind uh, the most uh, about egypt yeah the temples the pyramids the thing they have the history uh, okay yeah Okay, but that's expected. Let me tell you what was unexpected for me. Two things. The size of Cairo. Mm -hmm. I was not prepared for that. (laughs) All right. But that being said, it was the people of Egypt, Mm -hmm. the people of Cairo, the people of all the cities and towns that we visited. You know, of, of every segment of society had a smile on their face. Mm-hmm. We right? I mean they and, were nice. Really it, nice. You you have to experience that. I mean, everybody everywhere was happy. Welcoming. They were very welcoming. Mm-hmm. You remember when uh, we're out in the middle of the desert. We're out mm-hmm. in the middle of nowhere driving and you're watching everybody in the village run to the street to oh, wait. Yeah. yeah, those kids. Ooh, right. that was that was that was heart wrenching. <laughs> oh my gosh. They were so happy. So you happy. Know, was so yeah. and 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 I I came away from that and I'm trying to express this to everybody to experience that every inch of the journey, right? It was it was everywhere the size of cairo uh, you know 30 million people 30 million smiling faces mm-hmm. it, it was it was a crazy thing to experience elizabeth and something that i i came away uh from egypt with a, a very profound uh change in my view of humanity 
uh, uh, the happiness of the culture there. Yeah, yeah. I feel like in in this Western culture, we've gotten a little spoiled um, with with all of the amenities that we have over here. I mean, they have a pretty difficult time over there. I mean, you saw the the <laughs> you saw the city and the the status of of the buildings and the crumbling buildings. I'm talking no electricity, no toilets. You know, it's it's not the best conditions to to live in. You have these tiny little baby kids working on these hot oven stoves and sweeping and doing these hard labor jobs. And it's, it's really amazing to watch with good attitudes. Right. And then you come to America and we just have it a little different over here. We've gotten spoiled and we've gotten entitled. And I would advise everybody just take a trip, take a trip around the world, go to a third world country, see how they live and then go back home <laughs> You you be much more grateful. Yeah, yeah. That. Find a reason to complain. Yeah. yeah just, <laughs> just, right. just, what 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 do, no 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 no. We have no, got we have nothing to complain we have about. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. it, it was just absolutely incredible uh, to experience that. And and again, thank you uh, uh, for inviting me, and of course Billy, and and for being such gracious host. Uh, it was, it was a a paradigm shift for me and, uh, it was absolutely incredible along with uh, the grounding. And as soon as this show ends, I'm getting hooked up. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Getting hooked up. I, I, I did just thank you, Elizabeth. Now, uh, you can pre-order the book now. I was watching the chat and my email. Uh, where can, where can I get the book? I want to know more about grounding. Look, the links are below click on it. Uh, Elizabeth's website is there, uh, where to order the book and all of that. Uh, there's a discount right now too, as well. So, uh, just go click on the links. Grounding will change your life. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Elizabeth, congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. I'm really happy. <laughs> Life is good. It was a good day. <laughs> uh, tell Billy I'll call him tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Have a great night. Have a great grounding, dream-filled night. And uh, I know that you're just going to be smiling. Uh, uh, I, I just congratulate you. It's Thank just you. an incredible day. Thank you so much, Jimmy. And thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure speaking and talking and, and always, always. I just love you so much. So. <laughs> right back and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. All right. Elizabeth Hoekstra. I'm going to take a quick break. Now, everybody, the links are below. Uh, The book is in pre-order. It's going to be released in three weeks, but the links for that are below. And the earthing book uh, that uh, I was talking about, you can find that too as well. And uh, there you go. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. I want to thank Elizabeth. Congratulations, Elizabeth and Billy. Yeah, she got the hard word today. Absolutely incredible. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. I'll be the host and MC once again this year for the 2023 Conscious Life Expo, February 10th through the 13th at the LAX Hilton in Los Angeles, California. This is a four-day live event featuring hundreds of speakers, exhibitors, and not-to-miss special events. Check this out. Linda Moulton Howe, Bashar, Deborah King, Daniel Sheehan, George Norrie, David Wolf, Sean Stone, Danny Brinkley, Susan Slaughter, the Leo King, David Palmer, Scott Walter, and another 
another 200 inspirational speakers. Special events include a disclosure lunch with me, Expo's Got Talent, hosted by me, a seance with Susan Slaughter, the George Norrie Forum, and the Leo King is going to DJ at a dance party. Over 200 exhibitors, over 200 speakers. It's the biggest event of the year. Tickets are on sale now at ConsciousLifeExpo.com. For everything you need, info, tickets, schedule, and speakers, please visit ConsciousLifeExpo.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. This is Billy Carson, founder and CEO of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv is the fastest growing and one of the most watched networks in the world. And I would like to personally invite you to check out our expanding library of TV, film, lectures, and special presentations. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv has over 6,000 videos covering lost history, health, UFOs, spirituality, and our future. We are committed to our community. And with my personal invitation, you can right now get your own free 30-day membership at Forbidden knowledge.tv your own library of information starts today at forbidden knowledge.tv your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse kunx db bx are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie K. That's unxmedia.com. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the Fader Knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder, but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day. As an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Rivermooncoffee.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. <laughs> It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your Jimmy Church. I want to thank Elizabeth Hoekstra. Dear friend, and absolutely, uh, you know, somebody that I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for, but uh, we are friends. And the grounding aspect of this, uh, of this friendship, where she just like gifted me this, and wow, I mean, I can't, you just need to go do your own research run around barefoot for a little bit and, 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 and try to understand uh, what uh, we're trying to uh, share with you. All right. And, and, and the, the book is going to come out, read it, Just check it out. It's, it's a game changer, but here's the thing. All right. So we started off the show tonight. Uh, we were talking about Egypt <clears throat> and, and I went to this, this underground Pharaonic Lake and, 
in, you know, and I've described this with everybody and uh, to have Elizabeth share our, our experience together. I wanted her to tell her version of, uh, uh, not her version, her experience, and then how we met up. Now, here's the thing. Um, I'm going to show you something right now. Oh, by the way, I opened up the phone lines, uh, 818-921-6929, um, uh, just because. Okay, so the phone lines are open. All right, but now I want you to check this out. She describes the temple in, uh, that she was in. And I was trying to tell you the size of this uh, temple complex. It's huge, Dendera. It's very big. So now check this out. In this image here, that's uh, the, the temple priest of Dendera. That's him here. Um, off in the background, up at the top here, that's the temple that Elizabeth went into, okay? And uh, she's in there now. Uh, this is a video. Here, right here, if you can follow my pointer, that is the entrance. That's the staircase that goes down. It's about 50 feet about five stories underground that goes down to this underground lake. This is, you know, you can see this is just one corner of the Dendera temple complex. And this temple that uh, Elizabeth was in while I was shooting this video, I'm getting ready to enter. I'm going to play the video in a second. Elizabeth is in here. You can see this is just one corner. You can see the size of this. It's just huge. Okay. So um, I don't know at this point of the video what I'm about to experience and what's going on. I'm going to roll the video now. So I'm walking over uh, uh, with the priest. Uh, there is Shah, uh, our Egyptologist. She's in front of me. And uh, <clears throat> you can see, look at the size of Dendera. The temple itself uh, is to my right um, and maybe, yeah, that's the temple, that's Dendera behind me. Now, here we go, we start to ascend, and this is when the priest tells me, ah, ah, you've got to turn off your camera, no video. And um, so that's that's the setup uh, for, for everything. So as I uh, descended, uh, down those steps um, and uh, went through that. Um, my shoes are off. I'm grounded. Uh, and I didn't realize that all of these things were happening at the same time. Meanwhile, Elizabeth is in this temple off in the background, and she's having this experience with the red and and colored lights. Again, Elizabeth is here, and I am going into this uh, underground lake. All right, so I'm going to roll this one more time. I want you to see the size of Dendera. So right now, there, there you go. That's the shot that, let me pause this. Let me back this up. That's where Elizabeth is. So when, when I came back out, of the underground lake, I come up the stairs, I walk in this direction, and I'm going across the sand. Elizabeth is way over here. She's come out. The temple door that she went in was at this end. I want you to look at the size of this. This is huge. This isn't the main Dendera temple. This is one of the exterior temples that are um, on the grounds of Dendera. Okay, so when I, uh, uh, when Elizabeth and I were talking about uh, when I came out, I came up from, uh, you know, underground, and I started to walk in this direction, and that's when Elizabeth and I met up. But that's the temple right there that she had this light envelop her. When, um, I'm going to roll this one more time, and so you can just kind of get a scope of, the size of, of what we're talking about here. It is a ginormous uh, temple complex. 
Um, so anyway, when I came back out of, there it is, man, going down the stairs, uh, right there. And you can't even see the bottom. It's, it's just, it's black. Um, no, no technology, no lights, nothing like that is, is permitted, um, in, in this, uh, very, very spiritual, very special place. So, um, so back to my point. So now you know where I was. I had taken off my flip flops and now I'm barefoot and I disappear. And I don't know. I don't have somebody guiding me. I don't have anybody telling me what to expect and, and how to deal with it. I didn't know any of these things. As I went down the stairs um, and I, I, I get to the bottom, Jimmy, who is in front of me, uh, the priest is behind me. He's got his hand on my shoulder as we're going down the stairs. I got my hand on Jimmy's shoulder. Um, I can't see. It's black. And we, we um, I can feel the coolness of the stones. Up top, it was 100 degrees. It was 105 degrees. And it's hot. It's the desert. When I took off my uh, flip-flops, I feel the heat. You know what it's like on a hot summer day on the asphalt. It's hot. So uh, as I'm descending the stairs, I get about, I don't know that I'm halfway, but but let's just say, I get about halfway down and I can feel the stones are just getting cooler and cooler steps um, cooler and cooler and cooler, and then I can feel the moisture and starting to get damp, and the the stones are now cool under my feet. We get to the bottom of of everything, then I can hear the water. I can hear the dripping. I can't see it. It's black. It's black. There's nothing down there. You can't see anything, but I can hear it. And Jimmy. Um, is in front of me and, and I can see his outline. He walks out into the water. I can hear it. I was shocked by the way. Remember that's the desert above us. That's the Sahara desert is above us. We are underground. And, and, and I hear him splashing and I could see what he's doing. And he's taking the water and he's throwing it all over his body is, you know, just bathing in it. And he comes back to me. We're, we're not allowed to talk, right? And he whispers in my ear, it's all yours. So I walk out into the water. I'm barefoot, of course. <clears throat> and it's cool. It's not warm. It's cool. And it doesn't make any sense. And my, my, my brain is starting to fire off. Something's going on. And I, I walk out, you know, and it's, I'm probably, it's, you know, it's like not, I'm not knee deep, but, but, you know, about halfway up my, my shin and <clears throat> I do what Jimmy did. Right. And I splash this water all over me. My hair, my, I, I literally take a shower and I throw this water and I could feel something changing. Now we're talking about, there's a couple of things going on at this point. Let's go back to the grounding aspect of this. I'm barefoot. I'm in water. I'm in an underground lake. Um, the temperature change from my body, from being in the sunlight. Now the temperature change is happening. I'm also in darkness you're deprived of light. This is all your senses. I'm telling you, my brain is starting to fire off. And I didn't understand. Nobody was there nobody to, to, to tell me what to expect or how to do this or the process, the ceremony. No, I was on my own. So I do this, right? And then I turn around and I start walking up the stairs. And I get about 10 steps up, and I have to grab the wall. I don't have another way to explain this, but there was, there was something happening. 
And I then uh, uh, I, I grabbed the wall so I don't fall down the stairs. <laughs> right? I'm serious, man. It was crazy. And and I kind of get uh, my my it's not my balance. I'm to just get my the control. I go up the stairs. I I I and then you go from this blackness out into <laughs> the sun, the light. And this, it, it just all happened at the same time. And, and all I can tell you from the experience is that once I got up outside, somebody to my right said something to me. I don't remember what it was. Like, you know, Jimmy, what's, what's going on down there? What, what, whatever. And, and I didn't want to lose what was happening? And I remember putting my hand out, like, no, not now. And I walked in the other direction. And and I'm trying to keep this this thing going. And it was it was it was it was it was an explosion. And it was it was it was fun. It was a new experience. I didn't know. Uh, still don't really. Um, uh, you know, and th- because it's a chemical, spiritual, electrical, physical thing all happening at the same time. It was tremendous. So as all of this is going on and I'm trying to process and I don't want to lose it. I want to I, I just want it to stay, you know, this this. This experience, it's the wrong word to use, but I didn't want it to go away. I was trying to hang on to it. And as this is happening and I, I turn left and you can see now you've seen the size of the temple complex. It's big. All right. Now, so I walk away and I'm just trying to stay in the zone. That's a good word. Zone, not experience the zone. I'm trying to stay in the zone. And as I'm turning, I'm like a wanderer in the desert, right? And I head in this direction. That's when I hear, Jimmy, Jimmy. And I kind of look off like a mirage, and there's Elizabeth. And she's, you know, caught waving. And I didn't want to lose the zone. And I just waved these people off to my right. No, no, no. And, and Elizabeth is calling my name and, and I start walking towards her. She's my friend. She's, yeah, you know, okay. All right. But I didn't want to lose this. So, um, and this is very personal, but this is what was going through my mind was there was a dis there was a gap between us that was closing and I could tell I had about another minute and about 60 seconds. Right. So I'm just like walking in her direction, but trying to keep this, this thing. It was profound. And so we meet up in my head, you know, and, and things. And that's when Jimmy, I I never see shit, man, but this thing just happened over here in this temple. I'm like, what? Uh, Elizabeth, I'm, I'm going through my own thing right now. Well, yeah, but, 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 and I was like, yeah, but, but, but. And the two of us at that moment were, were experiencing something for the first time. For her, it was being enveloped in this, this energetic uh, multicolored. She described it as red uh, at first. And it's, it's a game changer when this happens. And she wants to share that with me. And I am in the middle of this thing. And now... That's why I showed this video, um, and so you can understand Elizabeth's view of of what was happening and what she went through. Now you've seen the complex, you've seen the temple that she she was in. So um, so anyway, as my head starts to click, we sit down on this bench, and uh, it was a rock, a megalithic stone, and we sit and we're just talking to each other and then uh we get up and and now i'm starting to literally get my feet back under me 
And we walk around, and that's when she says, that's where I was. And she points, and I look, and now I see, I didn't even see the temple before. I didn't see it. I was I was too focused on the stairs and, and the lake and stuff. And I look, and this thing is ginormous. And the so from the side, you don't see it here in the video, but you're you're seeing the side of it. From the front is the entrance, and it's a door. It's probably 20 feet wide by 30 feet tall. It's like two it's huge. It's ginormous. And and when she points at it and I look, it's black. Inside of that temple, there's no windows, there's no light streaming in. And and now I'm understanding what she was trying to tell me that she was in this black room, um, and and this this light somehow came in, but there was no place for it to come into. And I'm looking at the temple, and I turn around and I, I'm looking at her, and I'm thinking about what was happening five stories below ground at the lake. And it kind of hits me. What did the Egyptians know? The underground lake, that temple that she walked into, the Dendera temple that was bringing tears to everybody's eyes, um, this, this spiritual thing, what is it that the Egyptians knew? The priest told me, um, he said, this is where the pharaohs went for spiritual cleansing. That's what he said. No more, no less. Think about that for a second. Now, I, I didn't know any of this. Going in, when uh, I, I'm trying to process this and I'm talking to Shah and I'm talking to the priest and I'm talking to Jimmy um, about this, it, it just came crystal clear that the pharaohs were doing this. They would walk up barefoot, descend those stairs, go through the same then ascend and come back out and what did the Egyptians know? Because today as I, and I'm as serious as I can be when, when I was going through all of these steps uh, with Jay Widener and we're discussing the technical aspect because today we understand electricity. We understand temperature changes. We understand this. We, we, you know, we we understand it technically, right? Technically, the technology. And so, what is happening chemically and energetically with electricity and everything else? The processes that are going through our physical being, the mind, the brain, your vision, your touch, your sense, your smell. You have all uh, uh, all of this. It's happening at the same time. You go down and your body is going through a process. Now, we can, we can discuss this today and look at the science of it and discuss what's firing off in your brain and, and neurons and your nerves and your senses and all. We're talking about thousands of years ago. That's the part, and it just hit me. This, they understood something. They had it together, man. They had it all figured out. When you go and, and, and experience this on your own, like I did, it doesn't make any sense. And you're just like, you know, because the, the spiritual journeys that we go on today, or we talk about this or fasting or whatever it is that you do, Right. The Egyptians were doing this thousands and thousands of years ago. 
that temple that that Elizabeth went in and had this experience, it was built for that purpose. If you ever get a chance, go. You need to go. You need to go. Um, and Egypt isn't the is certainly the only country in the world that 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 has you know the uh, the geographic locations and these temple sites and things. No, the ancients knew something, but I was able to experience it. So when I tell you, that's why I showed you this video. When I tell you that I went and descended from the sands of the Sahara Desert and descended down into this lake, um, I'm, I'm not playing around. This is something that that happened. It was tremendous. It was tremendous. And so now, again, uh, having Elizabeth on the show and, and talking about what, what grounding is, this, this thing that I started a couple of months ago, again, it's, this is something that was not explained to me. I just did it. I woke up in the morning, and I knew that something had happened. And it's uh, it's been very, very, very exciting for me. And then you tie all of this in to the other experiences that I've gone through um, in the last couple of months. It's 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 been fun. It's been incredible. It's been incredible. So there you go. Uh, tomorrow night is another fader night. I'm sorry, I, I did open up the phone lines and I didn't pick up one call. I apologize to everybody that was trying to get through. But I need to share this with everybody. I do. I do. So the links for Elizabeth's new book uh, are below. Uh, her website is there. Uh, the, uh, the grounding website, that company, Earthing, is, is there too as well. Here is the book. Um, all of this was new to me, and I have just been figuring this out on my own. And get those cotton sheets. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. I want to thank Elizabeth. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Uh, Billy and Elizabeth got engaged earlier today. Absolutely incredible. So congratulations. Tomorrow night is another Fader night with open lines all night long. Aside from tonight, my favorite night of the week. Fade to Black is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Spaceboy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network, and this broadcast is owned and copyrighted. 2022 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tomorrow night is Fader Night. Until then, I want everybody to be safe. Go Beckley Tepe.